And this has been the Louisiana News Magazine. Call us if you'd like more information. The factory authorized sale is going on now at Inspirations Furniture and Design. Look for special savings across our showroom on in stock and special orders. Inspirations Furniture and Design at Perkins and Segan. Henry Repeating Arms is a family owned business. At Henry, we make sure that each part of every rifle is made in America like gun barrel quality steel from Ohio, brass castings from Pittsburgh, and the finest American walnut from Missouri. We deliver an American-made rifle that you would be proud to own. To own your own piece of American history, call now for your free Henry catalog and a list of dealers in your area, plus a free decal. Call now. Friday Night Blitz, the WBRZ Sports 2 team breaks down all the action of high school football following WBRZ News 2 at 10. WBRZ, your home for high school sports. Brought to you by these sponsors. The factory authorized sale is going on now at Inspirations Furniture and Design. Look for special savings across our showroom on in stock and special orders. Inspirations Furniture and Design at Perkins and Segan. Thank you for watching WBTR Baton Rouge, KBTR CD Channel 41. Okay. Um, I, I sure hope that uh, he's the only Jesuit grad that gets in our Grizzly <laughs> Greats, but, um, and I told him that, we had a good laugh. But uh, what an unbelievable service he's been to our program for so many years and just a, a phenomenal person. Uh, Coach Hood, you can't say enough about uh, Coach Hood and uh, the leadership he's provide, provided for our school, for our football and our track program. And just, uh, you know, his, his, uh, his mentorship of the other coaches around has really just um, it's it's been uh, one of the gifts that he's given to the school without a doubt I can recall quite a few times where I went and sat in coach Hood's office as a young coach and and asked him questions and he he kind of counseled me a little bit um, and then of course the June who I've gotten to know a little bit over the past uh, year or so since I've become the head coach and uh, what a what a great unique personality he is and uh, just really a heart for helping people, you know, and, and um, I think that's one of the things he probably took the most from, from being a Catholic is uh, his philanthropy and, and the things that he does for people that are a little less fortunate than him and also a phenomenal javelin thrower and football player. So really excited about those three guys getting in and, um, you know, uh, all of those guys are, are uh, special to us on, in the football program. All special to us. Coach, have a special game tonight versus the Griffins. Thanks, Dixon. Go Bears.
the great ones, Kevin Franklin, the original Mr. Football Friday night, joined us in the booth. Kev, you're just on the field for the Grizzly Great presentation. What was that like down there to see all the great ones of Catholic High? It's always touching. It's always touching to see the, see the old guys. See the, and they're not old. You know, some of them are young, some of them are young. But just to see those guys, it's, not, it's like you feel like an old classic car. You know, everybody admires it and stuff like that. So it's always good to see those guys. And it does your heart well. It really does. You know, a lot of guys out there have had some really great battles versus Dutchtown. We should have another great matchup tonight. They're 4-4. Four and four. We're 7-1. and one. We're 3-0 and in district play. They're 1-2. and two. Catholic wins tonight. They at least hold on to a share of the district title. So it'll be interesting to see what happens past three seasons. Catholic High is 2-1 and one versus touchdown. But it's always been a tough matchup. Yes, Dutchtown has always had a good team. They've been plagued with a lot of injuries this year. So don't hold that against them. Uh, they have a good job, guy. The, the wide receiver is a great guy. He's, and also the quarterback throws it around really well. Yeah. And they have a great defense. So they, they're a good team, but just having some trouble this year. Yeah, just having some trouble. Well, what will be the keys to victory as we go through Kevin's keys to victory? I want to see the recharge the passing game. I want to see us get back into the passing game and loop, pass the ball around, throw it deep, throw it short, because that hurts us. Plus, we had those interceptions last week. Yep, recharge that passing game. Key number two. The, the secondary, I want to see the secondary do well. I want to see a sound defense, sound secondary. I want to see them get pass. I want to see them in the passing game. I want to see them kind of challenge those guys a little bit. Yeah, and key number three. Limit the big plays and the penalties. Those are two yeah. things that in the last couple of weeks, Dixon, you can, you, you can tell, say about it. <laughs> we've been hurting with that for the last couple of weeks. So if we can limit that and do well with that and just do better than we've been doing, going into the playoffs, we'll, have, we'll be all right. We'll have a shot. Yeah, last week, you know, that great victory we had versus EA, down 3 nothing at halftime, come back 35 straight points. We're hoping that doesn't happen tonight. You've been walking the walk on Bistro pregame show. And before we get going, we want to thank all the Catholic High corporate partners, Walk-On's Bistro, Mid-South Bank, Slocal, Baton Rouge Coca-Cola, Marucci, Moro Physical Therapy, Raisin Canes, Lamar, Shoppers Value, and Walters Papillon Thomas Cullen's Attorneys at Law. We'll be right back. It's about to be kickoff here at Homecoming live on Bruin Broadcast Network. This is Director of Advancement Jamie Seeger from the Class of 1990 for the Fund for Catholic High School. Since 1894, the Brothers of the Sacred Heart have relied on gifts providing financial support to keep CHS strong. Your gift to the fund is essential to student success and allows our students to... Patrick Keeley, number 16. Jonathan Medier, number 17. Gregory Martin. So the Griffins won the toss, and they deferred, so Catholic High got the opening kickoff. Josh Parker brought it out to the 33-yard line. That's where we'll have it first and 10. Dartez under center, hands off to Josh Parker in the middle, 40, 50, crosses midfield, 40, 30, 25, 20, one man to meet, and number six put sick on the board. Touchdown, Catholic High. How do you like that first play? Good job, young man. Hey, rumble, young man, rumble. And that's the way you show the old guys. Wow, what a run right there by Josh Parker. 77 yards on the touchdown turn. 67, trying to give him 10 extra right there. My bad. <laughs> Professor Messenger in the booth with us tonight. So the 11:36, Josh Parker takes it to the house. What a great way to start off the homecoming night here at Memorial. On to kick the extra point. Darts has the hold. The kick is up by Kazanoff. And she's good. So with 11.36 to go in the first quarter, Catholic High 7, the Griffins nothing. We'll be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. Hello, Bear fans. This is Daryl Papillon of Walters Papillon Thomas & Cullens, a proud partner of the Catholic High Bears. 
Our lawyers have 100 years of experience handling serious injury, wrongful death, and complex commercial cases. We are the alumni, parents, and children representing more than a dozen current and former Catholic high school Bears or alumni of other schools of the Brothers of the Sacred Heart. Go Bears! And welcome back, Bear Nation, to Catholic High Football on the opening play of the game for the Bears. Josh Parker takes it 67 yards to the house, and Catholic High leads the Bears. Catholic High leads the Griffins 7 to nothing. Catholic High is in their usual homecoming attire, black hats, black jerseys, white pants, and the Griffins are going to counter them in the white helmets, white jerseys, and purple pants. Off to kick will be Matthew Goodson for the Bears. And back to receive for the Griffins will be number seven, Jacoby Williams, and number five, Terry Matthews. Number five, Terry Matthews guy. We're really going to say his name a lot for the Griffins, Kevin. Yeah, he, what he does, he's everywhere for the and does a lot of things. And he kind of takes that pitch off of Jordan. Jordan's been out with his answer, Jordan Jackson, so he's kind of been that, that pillar guy. So here comes Matthew Goodson kicking off from the 40. He's kicking out of the horseshoe towards the street. It hits him at the 10-yard line, out to the 15, 20, runs into his own man, 22-yard line, and that's where he'll go down. That was Jacoby Williams, a line drive kick right there by Goodson, and the Griffins will start their first possession at the 24-yard line, 11.25 to go first quarter. So the Bears will come out. You know, one thing that Coach Sean Jezik told me, you know, early in the season we really saw us in a 4-3 defense. Tonight most likely we'll see a 3-4 kind of out there for the Bears. So something to look at getting that extra linebacker roving around because Dre Monroe, 11, the quarterback, is a great athlete. He'll have three to the far side. Man will come in motion to the near side. 23, Bladen Lewis, the running back. Shotgun, he drops back, looks for a pass, now gets some pressure. Now he's rolling to his left, throws it down the field deep. And over the intended receiver, that was number five, Terry Matthews. Incomplete pass, second and ten from the 24. Yeah, you could tell when he when he went to scramble, he didn't really run off with it. You know, he wasn't he wasn't looking to run. He was still going to try to throw it right there. But he'll have second and ten from the 24, 11:15 to go in the first quarter. Shotgun snap. He'll hand it off to number seven, Jacoby Williams. He'll go near sideline, still on his feet, crosses the 35 and taken out of bounds at the 38-yard line. He'll pick up 15 and a first down for the Griffins. Yeah, one thing talking to Deuce Harrison and Hudson Fuller, I said, Man, watching them on film, they look like our offense, like the way they set up in the scheme. They're most likely always in the shotgun, two receivers each side. really looks a lot like us. They said, yes, yeah, so we're hoping our defense sees it enough in practice that they'll be able to execute. Shotgun snap again to Monroe. He'll give a little pump fake, still looking down the field to throw it. Now he's going to tuck it and try to run, and he'll be taken out of bounds by Jonathan Medier. Probably a loss of one on the play. Nice job by Medier coming up from the strong safety position to make the tackle. Loss of two on the play. This will be second and 12 from the 38-yard line. They need to get to midfield the 50 to get the first down. Dre Monroe will be in shotgun. he got two receivers to the far side. That's his right. One receiver to the near side. They're going right to left on Dizzy's Toyota Tundra dial. Now the running back goes in motion to the left side. Straight snap to Dre Monroe, just the quarterback keeper to the right side. He'll pick up two back to the line of scrimmage. So it's going to be third and ten for the Griffins. Yeah, when you have that three-man three, three man front, though, you have to be sound in your technique. You have to be gap defend. You can't just run up the field. You need to know where he's coming because they'll, if you run up the field, it's going to call a, cause a gap. Which we've seen uh, Cameron Dartez just crush people on this year. So third and ten from the 40, have to get to midfield. He's in shotgun again. And there they go. They'll go with the quick hands. So what the offensive line does, they, for those not watching, they come to the line of scrimmage. All their hands are on their knees. Yes. He'll snap it and say hut. And then they'll all put their hands down together. And it gets the defensive line to jump off sides. We knew it was coming. Right. We've seen it on film. But still so hard to stay back. So they'll pick up an easy five against the Bears. Hey, Kevin's third key. Limit big plays and penalties. First penalty of the night. 
<laughs> yeah, just limiting them. I think we'll be okay if we just play in a sound game. So Monroe once again is in shotgun. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Once again, they try to do the hard snap. Bears don't budge this time. Bladen Lewis, the running back, lined up in the backfield to his right. 88, Jaden McKinney is the H back to his right as well. They're heading into the horseshoe here at the concrete coliseum known as Memorial Stadium. Shotgun snap, drops back, looks to his right, looking down the field, has a receiver, throws a little bit behind his intended receiver, incomplete. It'll be fourth and four for the Griffins. Really well. He just sat in the zone. He just sat into there. He just couldn't get him the ball. So that's a good job. Actually, that's a great defense by the Bears on that one. That pass was intended for Derek Youngblood. If he would have caught it, it would have been a first down. So now coming on to punt, they got two kickers. This will be number... Looks like 81 here. Devin Tier will be the kicker. He's had two blocks this year. Back to receive for the Bears will be number one, Braylon Morgan. He's standing at the 21-yard line. Low snap. He's still trying to get. He's not. He's able to get away from the Bears, trying to run for it, and they're going to take him down. Elijah Reams at the 43-yard line, and the Bear offense will have phenomenal field position. Before you have to go cover the kick, you need to block your man. The Bears took prime example of it. Now we have field position to go in for another score. Yeah, a low snap right there, and Devin Tier, the kicker, tried to pick it up, then he refumbled it, then yeah. at that point you know you can't re-kick it because someone's going to be there to block it. So he just tucks it, tried, he gained a couple yards on the carry, but the Bears now will have phenomenal field position as they will start their second drive inside Griffin territory at the 44-yard line, 9:27 to start this possession. Cameron Dartez and the offense will come out. Braylon Morgan will be the running back. Darts has it shotgun, two receivers to the far side, his left. Braylon Morgan goes in motion to the Catholic High sideline. Dartez rolls to his left, looks down the field. Now he'll throw it under to Braylon Morgan, the line of scrimmage. He gets to the 40-39, pick up a five on the play. It'll be second and five for the Bears. Yeah, Dixon, I always love that modified sweep. When the quarterback runs and he's getting on the edge and he's throwing it to that guy, Braylon, I love that play because it's almost you're extending the, the, uh, the offensive line. You're, you're extending the line of scrimmage. I love that play on, on the outskirts of that. And one thing about that play, too, the wide receivers were running down the field. There's always that chance for a big throw, which oh, is God. always great. So in practice, I always threw the big throw. <laughs> Coach Weiner, not too happy about those. So Dartez, he'll come under center. Jake Outlaw will be the running back. He'll fake the handoff counter to the near sideline. Throws it now. Force Roy makes the reception to 30, and he'll go down at the 26-yard line. I mean, I don't think he was down, but they're going to say he was down. Okay, 26-yard line, first down, Catholic High. We'll take it. Forrest Roy is coming in the game. He has 29 uh, receptions with 286 yards with three touchdowns. We try to get him going, and that's what he's doing. All that was is spot up and throw him the ball. I love that play. Forrest Roy, our leading receiver this year in yards. Him and Dartez really have a great connection so far. First and 10 for the Bears, 26-yard line, 8.30 to go, first quarter. Shotgun snap, will just hand it off up the middle to Jake Outlaw. He'll get about a yard on the play. So it'll be second and nine from the 25. Yeah, Outlaw, is, he's, a, he's a change of, of pace. So you put Outlaw in there to hit the holes hard and to give you some, uh, give you a different different look. So they're going to change probably running back by committee. They're going to probably run another one in. And, of course, Outlaw last week with that huge <laughs> yes. run at EA, the touchdown. Yes. Yes. I saw him at practice, and I apologize. My, the call wasn't that great. I said, I thought you were going to go down. <laughs> and everybody around was like, yeah, but how about that stiff arm, man? What a stiff arm. <laughs> so, stiff arm though. so great. Second and nine, 25-yard line, 7.54 to go. Dartez in shotgun. Throws the quick pass near sideline. That's Force Roy. Catches the 25, and he's taken out at the 19, 18, 17 and a half. So he'll be two yards away from the first down. Yeah, good job of downfield blocking by the wide receiver on that play as well to give him a little lane. The Bears are moving the ball, and I always love them holding the ball because that's going to be used in, in the playoffs, especially with time. You can use time and position. So with that pass completion to Forrest Roy, the Bears have now entered the Baton Rouge Coca-Cola red zone. Third and one from the 18-yard line, 721 to go here in the first quarter. Catholic Kai leads the Griffins 7 to nothing. We're live from Memorial Stadium on Grizzly Great Homecoming Band Reunion Night. Shotgun snap to Dartez. He's just going to keep it right side. Josh Parker in front of him is a blocker. Crosses the 10 down at the 8-yard line. Pickup of 8 and a first down Catholic high. Yeah, he's not a bad runner, man. Nope. They need to understand that. He has 56 carries and 246 draw and 5 touchdowns. So Dartez is, is a, a He's a threat running the ball when he has it in his hands. So Bears will have it eight yards to go to the goal. Seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Dartez at shotgun. Jake Outlaw will be the running back. Two receivers to the near side, two to the far side. Double twins for Dartez. Now Cubics will go in motion. H back to the left side. Balls on the right hash. 
Grisafi will come in motion behind Dartez. He'll just hand it off to Jake Outlaw up the middle. Crosses the five, taking down the three-yard line. A pickup of four on the play. And it looks like it'll be second and a long two to go for the Bears. Good hard run. All we're doing is pushing pushing the line of scrimmage, and he's getting right, right in behind those guys because we I think we out, we outskill them and we outmeasure those guys in the line. Yeah, and they have a pretty big defensive line. Shane Levy, yes. 91, 94. Jiren Blakes, the number 90. Javion Hughes, yes. nice size up there yes. for the Griffins, but that Bear O-line is just fantastic. Dartez now will go under center. Here's the Bruin package. Fanukin, Bankston in there, the right side. Josh Parker is the running back. They'll hand it to Josh Parker, and he is met in the backfield by the linebacker for the Griffins. That was number three. Reggie Spears got in there for the tackle. It'll be third and three for the Bears. Yeah, Spears is one of their guys that they look to. Uh, 5'11", 195, he's a senior, and he moves around, and he moves really, really well. So do not underestimate that big guy. Especially look, you saw in that last play. Josh Parker, who got the first touchdown tonight, that brings his yearly total up to 11, one of the tops in 5A, 4A in the area. So Bears have it third and three. It's third and goal, 534 to go. First quarter, Darts has it, shotgun, gets the snap. He'll just go speed option to the right side. He's going to keep it, reaches for the pylons, and it will be a touchdown, Catholic Kai. Cameron Dartes with the three-yard keeper, but we have a flag on the play. And it's going to be holding against the Bears. Yeah. And that'll bring it back. It looked like Josh Parker got out there running back with the block. And he kind of hooked him yep. a little bit. And when the, when the referees see that coming away from you, the jersey coming away from you, they're going to call it every time. But these are the penalties that we do need to stop, Dixon. These yep. are some of the things we need to stop. Second penalty of the night against the Bears, one on offense, one on defense. So the holding penalty will push us all the way back to the 14-yard line. So that's where we'll have it third and goal from the 14. 5.24 to go, first quarter. Bears still lead 7 to nothing. Dartez in shotgun. He's got three receivers to the far side. Now Edward Francis comes in motion. Dartez drops back, looks right, feels pressure, and he is going to be sacked. And that was number three again, Reggie Spears. Yeah, I told you. you to send a, a running back out there to block him, Josh has to go meet him where he's at. He can't stop his feet and then catch him. He needs to go meet that guy and block him where he is. Hey, he's giving up. You're giving up at least 30, 30 40, 40 pounds of that guy. Hey, he's, he's, a, he's a full load now. Yeah, he came straight off the blitz right there. Josh Parker, like you said, was there to meet him, but he didn't go get him. Yes. Right? Yes. So Cole Kazanoff will come in now to attempt the field goal. The ball will be placed at the 27-yard line, a 37-yard attempt. Now the referee's going to be stopping play. Let's the officials get under the goalposts. Kazanoff on the season, one for three, a long of 33. 37-yard attempt here will be his longest of the season. There's the snap, the hold, the kick is up. He's got enough distance. We're waiting on the call, and she's good. So with 4.27 to go in the first quarter, it's Catholic High 10. The Griffins nothing. We'll be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. We have a new player on the field, and he's ready for kickoff with a delicious Coca-Cola. The kick. Ice giving him a little trouble as a few cubes shake loose. He's probably going to pour it here. He does. The liquid cuts through an opening. That Coca-Cola's looking pretty good. Can he go all the way? He's going for it. He did it! And just listen to that fizz! Thousands of bubbles jumping in excitement. That might have been the most refreshing thing that I've ever seen. Coca-Cola. Taste the feel. And welcome back to Catholic High Football on the 37-yard field goal attempt and good by Cole Kazanoff with 4.23 to go in the first quarter. It is Catholic High 10, the Griffins nothing on the Catholic High Football Network, 104.5 ESPN, BruinBroadcast.com, and WBTR 19 Baton Rouge and 144 Ascension. So far, Kevin, the Bears putting points on the board, stopping the Griffins on defense, everything you could hope for on Grizzly Great Homecoming Band Reunion Night. Yes, I really love the fact the Bears thrown down and got some points out of that. I didn't want them not to get any points yeah. on that drive, and it did. Yeah. It did. Hey, it's a great night. The weather is awesome. Let me tell you that. I love the school weather. Chamber of Commerce football, Friday night Baton Rouge weather right now. Goodson with the kickoff from the 40, and this time does not get the line drive kick, and it's going to go all the way into the end zone, and the Griffins will start on the 20-yard line. Kev, tell us a little more about, you know, the Grizzly Great presentation was before the game. Who would you see down there? Share some memories about the flash and dash glory days. Two of my favorites were Leslie Salmon uh, and 
Tim Lanier. I got to be with those guys. We walked in together, and it's always good to see Tim. He's always puts a smile on my face. And Wesley and I coached together on the freshman team <laughs> back in. And he was my, he was, we coached together. He was often the coach. I was often the back coach. So it's good to see old Wesley South. Yeah. yeah. Love alumni nights like Corey Williams, Reve Smith from my class. Both went to Grambling to play football. But here come the Griffins. Dre Monroe at shotgun, empty backfield, three to the far side, two to the near side. Now Bladen Lewis will go in the backfield. There's the snap, and he's going to keep the option to the left side, makes a move on the Bear defender, but he's there to bring him down. Nice tackle right there. Look like number eight, Jalen Armwood, maintaining his presence right there and bringing him down, just a pickup of one. I love Jalen Armwood's ability. So in the next level, they can teach him how to cover. He will be able to get people to make tackles. That's an attitude, and he has an attitude to do that. He does it every time. I really like him when he do, does that. Great job on the, on the cover two defense right there. Yes. You know, he knew he had Medie deep. He's able to maintain his ground right there. Pickup of one will be second and nine, 21-yard line. Once again, Dre Monroe in shotgun. Man comes in motion to the near side. They're still going right to left on Dizzy's radio dial. Once again, there's the read option up the middle. He gives it this time to Jacoby Williams, who picks up five on the play. So it'll be third and four from the 26-yard line. Yeah, Jacoby Williams is a good running back. We can't let him get loose. We have to make sure we maintain, especially with those three offensive linemen. I think we can. Big Fanukin, he he holds, he he does a good job of filling holes, man. He really does. Yeah, we'll see Jacoby Williams at running back. Really, Bladen Lewis is the main running back. Yes. 410 yards, three touchdowns on the season. Draymond Rose in shotgun. He's got two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Once again, they go for the hard count. Trying to get the Bears to jump. They maintain their presence. Now going forward, they know if the hands aren't on the ground, don't jump when you hear that first yes. line. So they'll have trips to the far side, one receiver to the near side, going right to left. Gets the snap, quick pass, and it does get completed to number 88, Jaden McKinney, and he'll pick up seven for a first down for the Griffins. Yeah, just a quick pass, run to the sticks and turn around and throw you the ball. Uh, the Bears just need to defend on that. But here it is. They're moving the ball. I don't want to see a long drive on this. We need to make a stop. So he'll have first and 10, 2.47 to go in the first quarter. Nice quick pass there by Dre Monroe. He's in shotgun. Both running backs lined up to his right and left. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Waiting on the shotgun snap. He has it. Do the read option to the right side. He's going to give it to Bladen Luce, who goes to the far sideline, out of bounds, and he picked up three. Hey, folks, around Hearthstone, congratulations to the CHS band for its outstanding performance at the Dutchtown Sound Invitational. They took the best auxiliary in Class AA and second in overall band in Class AA. Way to go, Bears. And also, congratulations to Alan Duggar for achieving the rank of Eagle Scout. Alan is a member of Troop 14 from St. Luke's Episcopal. We are proud of you, Alan. Go Bears. So a pickup of two on the play to the 35-yard line. 2.29 to go in the first quarter. Draymond Rose in shotgun, empty backfield, but now Bladen Lewis will join him in the backfield to his left. He's got three receivers to the near side. The ball is on the far right hash. There's the snap, drops back, quick throw, the near sideline, number five, Terry Matthews, breaks away from the defender, 40, 45, and taken out of bounds at the 46-yard line. A pickup of 11 on the play, but another first down for the Griffins. Yeah, it's that spot pass, or what you call that, a, a screen, on, on out of that three that three wide receiver set onto that to that near side. Basically, what we have to do is play near, play up close to the line of scrimmage. Do not let them get that away, and we got to make the tackle. The first guy might to make the tackle. Bears are still playing that 3-4 kind of dime defense dime. right here. So, Draymond Rose at shotgun. Two receivers stacked. Now, man will go in motion behind the line of scrimmage. He'll get the snap. Quick pass to the far side. That's Jaden McKinney again. He'll pick up five on the play. They cross midfield to the 49-yard line inside Bear territory, second and five. Yeah, the dime guy was right there. He was right there on top of it. So, next play, I think we, we're going to get that play later on. We're just that close. Yes, sir. He's just making that catch, you know, right in front of the defender. The defender's right there to make the tackle. Right. But, hey, if you're still picking up five, four yards on a play, you'll take that as the Griffins are down 10 to nothing, 150 to go in the first quarter. Shotgun snap again. He'll hand it off to come in near sidelines. Bladen Lewis looking for a man to beat. Unable to do so, he'll pick up one on the play to the 48-yard line, but it will be third and five for the Griffins. Yeah, Bladen is, is a scat back. I call him a scat back, and he's going to try to cut the ball back. He's trying to get cut back yards. So he's going to try to cut it back totally on the field, on the grain of the field. So him doing that, he's not going to string it along and get a lot of yards. So Bears just have to watch and play play side. I would say he's closest to us, Braylon Morgan, yes. probably to us. Yeah, Same. you know, I was trying to give the people yes. someone on our team. So Draymond Rose at shotgun, 
Third and five from the 48. They are inside Bear territory. 110 to go on the game clock here in the first quarter. Catholic High, 10, the Griffins, nothing. Dre Monroe looks at the sideline, changes the play, walks up to the line of scrimmage. Play clock's at four. Still waiting on the snap. Just gets it off. He's going to roll to his right. Blitz for the Bears. Now he cuts back left, and he goes down a sack. Loss of seven on the play. What a great job of the Bear Black Hat defense. Looked like Elijah Reams and Connor Finucane and Christian Menino. Give all three of them <laughs> credit for that sack right a there. Port is in the backfield, and you're invited. And that's what I like to see in this half of this phase of the season. The Bears are doing a lot of blitzing, and they're doing a really, really great job of that. And I'm glad they, they changed some things best based on this side, side of the season. Hey, want to give a shout-out to Mike Reams. He's listening in at Prairieville. Just had some surgery. That's the grandfather of Elijah Reams. So, Mike, that sack was for you. Good job. So on the punt again, Devin Tier. Remember, it was a low snap. This time the snap right at him. He's able to get the kickoff. Braylon Morgan was back at the 20. But this ball was going to go out of bounds, and we'll see where they'll place it. When we come back, there'll be 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. It's Catholic High 10. Griffin's nothing on the Bruin Broadcast Network. Welcome to Walk-On's Bistro and Bar, where every dish starts from scratch. Fresh ingredients bring our food to life. Mouth-watering cuisine unique flavors and we're always more than happy to share our southern charm and culture a love of life family food friends fun and celebrations walk-ons it's game day with a taste of louisiana welcome back folks catholic high football here catholic has it first and 10 from their 30 handoff to josh parker that was jackson thomas in the ball game right there so we'll see if something Happen to Cameron Dartez. We'll try to get a sideline report. So Jackson Thomas is now in the ball game. He hands off to Josh Parker, and that will be the end of the first quarter. So through the first quarter of play, it's Catholic High 10. Dutchtown Griffins nothing. We'll be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. Football and investing have something in common. The stronger the team, the stronger the results. Let the team at Altus Wealth Management of Jesse Daigle, Mickey Guidry, Ronnie Brown, Brad Ewing, Wally McMakin, Jeremy Perk, John Reeder, and John Stewart be on your side for all of your investment needs. From IRA to 401k, Altus Wealth is the team for you. Call them today, 225-201-9300, or visit altuswealthmgt.com. Investment advisory services offered through Genos Wealth Management member FINRA SIPC. Shoppers Value, a proud corporate sponsor of Catholic High School, invites you to stop by one of our 18 locations in Louisiana and Mississippi to stock up on all your grocery needs. Our cost plus pricing offers you great value along with a quality selection of groceries, meat, and produce. Let us be your one-stop location. Shoppers Value, locally owned and operated, a proud family legacy of three Catholic High graduates and a proud supporter of Catholic High School. Welcome back, folks, to Catholic High Football here on 104.5 ESPN, BruinBroadcast.com, and WBTR Baton Rouge. We're starting the second quarter. Jackson Thomas is in at quarterback for the Bears. We're going to get a report from the sideline on Cameron Dartez in a second. He's on the shotgun. Quad receivers to the near side. Wait on the shotgun snap from Brian Hibbert. There's a snap, and Jackson Thomas is going to keep it on the run. Left side, crosses the 30 all the way to the 35-yard line. Pickup of six. We'll have it second and five from the 35-yard line. Yeah, good job by Jackson. He's taking, taking the lead of, of, of his offense and coming in and just probably filling in. I think he's just probably filling in and getting some reps uh, in, in, in for the win because it looks like we have a change right now. So. so he picks up six on the play, third and five from the 35. The Bears have now flipped. They're heading into the horseshoe right to left on Dizzy's Toyota Tundra dial. <laughs> 11.25 to go, second quarter. There's a shotgun snap. He's going to give it to Braylon Morgan, right side, makes a man miss, crosses the 40, and gets all the way out to midfield. Pick up a 15 for Braylon Morgan, and that's a first down Catholic high. Hey, Braylon Morgan keeps his feet going. Guys, if you didn't know, he needs 299 yards to get 1,000 yards. So we, we're going we're gonna to root for him, but we're not, not this early. We're really going early right now in the game. So Jackson Thomas at shotgun. Braylon Morgan, the running back, he's lined up to his right Trips receivers to the far side. That's the Catholic High sideline. High snap. Once again, a handoff to Braylon Morgan, and he slips in the backfield. So that would be a loss of one on the play. You know, it did rain pretty heavily last night, Kevin, and they played the U-High Madison prep game here uh, last night. 
yours truly was on talk uh, another station calling the game that was kind of neat I, so but, told me you was but so the field me, the field <laughs> is a little torn up you know so that yes. will be something to look at later in the day yes uh, even coach Mastretta when he came out mentioned it to coach Fertitta so there was a ball game here played last night so the field is not in the best of shape but still pretty good no excuse there right. second and 11 49 yard line once again, the snap to Jackson Tommy. He's going to take it right side, crosses midfield, gets the first down at the 40, 30, 25, still on his feet, cuts back all the way to the 20-yard line, a 31-yard run by Jackson Thomas, and he picks up the first down. Hey, guys, you're looking at the future, so, guys, our future looks bright. We got to wear shades. Hey, man, Jackson's looking good, and we got to hurry up with the tempo. We're back on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, back on the line of scrimmage now. Jackson Thomas at quarterback, Josh Parker in the backfield, two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Bar Horse is the H-back. He's lined up to the left. 10-20 to go, second quarter. Hand off to Josh Parker, left side. 15-10, still on his feet, trying to make a man miss, get the push from the O-line, and he picks up another first down, Catholic High. This is what we do well. We do, we run the ball well. We run the ball, run the ball, especially with Josh, and he does a great job of hitting those holes hard. I think we're going to run the ball <laughs> at him the rest of this half. Bears are inside the Baton Rouge Coca-Cola red zone. First to goal from the six. Hand off to Josh Parker, left side, and he gets in. Six, put six more on the board, and Catholic High goes up 16 to nothing on the Griffins. Hey, I saw that coming, guys. I can see it coming from a mile away. That's the way to go, young man. Get in that end zone so these younger players can get out here and play. Hey, he's making up so much of this offense this year. He's making up almost 30%, 40% of this offense. Good job, young man. So Josh Parker with his second touchdown of the night, 12 on the season. Cole Kazan off will come in to kick. Jackson, Jackson Thomas will be the holder for the Bears. Elijah Reams will do the snap. Bears now lead 16 to nothing, waiting for the extra point. Kick is up, and she's good. So at 9.57 to go till halftime, it's Catholic High, 17, Dutchtown nothing. We'll be right back. Bruin Broadcast Network. Now you can shop online with Marucci Sports this school year. Marucci is committed to outfitting Bear fans with the highest quality products by now offering its premier line of fan apparel for all of our CHS athletic teams online. Log on maruchisports.itemorder.com and enter CHS Bears in all caps in the sales code to view this year's entire line of fan gear. That's maruchisports.itemorder.com and enter Guess what? Our younger daughter, Emily, wants piano lessons and a piano. That was a surprise. Our oldest daughter, Jenna, wants to have her wedding here at home. That was a surprise. Good thing I have a home equity line of credit at Mid-South Bank. And good thing I have Mid-South Bank's mobile banking app to pay my bills and check my balance on the go, because I am going to be busy. If your family's like my family, you'll love Mid-South Bank. Great service, no surprises. Mid-South Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back, Bear fans. 104.5 ESPN WBTR. Catholic leads 17 to nothing. 9.57 to go till halftime. Matthew Goodson kicking off from the 40 into the horseshoe. A short kick be caught at the 15-yard line by number seven for the Griffins. That's Jacoby Williams. He comes near sideline now out to the 27-yard line. Pickup of 12 on the return. Nice job by the Bears to maintain him right there, Kevin. Yeah, I like that because the Bears stayed in their lanes. They didn't like like it bounced, but you bounce into a guy. So I like that that's, uh, lane containment and lane responsibility. I love it by the Bears. You know, and I haven't really been looking, but all the guys that were just on that kickoff coverage team or all of our backup defensive backs, yes. you know, those are the guys you want out there and on that one, you know, backs. right? I mean, <laughs> fast guys may not get in the game too much early on, but when they're out there for that play, hey. watch out. You are a special team guy so on that play. Dre Monroe will start 28-yard line, 9.34 to go till halftime. He's in the shotgun, three receivers to the near side, one to the far sideline. Quick throw near sideline, number five, Terry Matthews, and he's going to be out of bounds at the 32-yard line, a pickup of five on the play. They'll have second and five. Now the Bears need to do this. Do not get leery of him throwing those little shallow, shallow short passes because he can't throw the ball. i seen him on film. He can't throw the ball deep. He's had about three or four deep balls this year uh, when he came back from his injury. So he does have a nice arm, guys. Yeah, something, you know, you always see those little, we do the same thing, the other team, you know, short yes. pass, short pass, then we'll throw it deep. So we'll have two receivers to the near side, one to the far sideline, Jacoby Williams running back in the shotgun next to him. There's Dre Williams, gets the snap. He'll hand it off to Williams near sideline, met by the Bear defender, and taken down for a pickup of one, Elijah Reams on the tackle for the Bears. 
Yeah, Elijah Rings, man. I, his he, actually, I met his, his his cousin. Works at Mercy. He's a facility maintenance guy. He has a key comes from a great great family, man. Great great guy. So they'll have it. Griffin's third and four from the 34 yard line. Need to get to the 38 yard line. Pick up the first down. 8:28 to go till halftime. Bears lead 17 to nothing. Draymond Rose at shotgun. He's got three receivers to his left, which is the far sideline. Taking a little bit of time now. He's looking toward the sideline, seeing if the play gets changed. He'll walk up to the line of scrimmage. Jacoby Williams will be the running back lined up in the backfield to his right. Four seconds on the play clock. Able to get it off. He drops back. Once again, quick throw to the near sideline. And through the hands of the intended receiver, Derek Youngblood, just a little too quick for him. It would have been a first down, but now it's fourth and five for the Griffins. Great coverage and great help by that linebacker or that dime back coming to the flats. We almost had an interception on that one. Hey, we keep playing. We're going to get an interception later on in the game. Keep being in the right spot, and good things will happen to good people. So once again, to kick will be Devin Tier. So far tonight, this will be his third punt. The first one, low snap. He was taken down the backfield. Second one, he got off. Braylon Morgan back to receive for the Bears. He's standing at the 30-yard line. Devin Tears back at the 20. This time, the snap is good. He's able to get a nice kickoff. It'll go to the far sideline and out of bounds. Not sure if it bounces. It does bounce out of bounds. Now Brendan Morgan will pick it up. They didn't say it was out of bounds, so he's going to pick it up at the 5 and try to make a play, and he's only able to get to the 11-yard line. Not sure if that was the right play or not. So the Bears will take over on down. 70 to nothing. We'll be right back, Bruin Broadcast Network. At Moro Physical Therapy, we understand the importance of keeping you in the game, in athletics, and in life. That is why we offer convenient appointment times and excellent therapists in all 10 of our locations in and around the greater Baton Rouge area. As a proud corporate partner of Catholic High School, we're excited to be a part of the Bears' success throughout the years and into the years to come. For more information on the services offered, visit www.moropt.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Moro Physical Therapy. Welcome back, fans. Catholic High football. Catholic High leads 17 to nothing, 7.49 to go till halftime. There's a shotgun snap once again to Jackson Thomas. This time he'll hand it off to Jake Outlaw. Goes left side, big hit on the defender. And he's able to get a 12 yards and a first down Catholic high. You're not going to bring Outlaw just by one guy and one by your arm tackling him. You have to bring that guy. I love how he runs. He runs with reckless abandon, they called it back in the day. Reckless abandon. Great job by Outlaw. He'll get a break here. Brandon Morgan will come back. Let folks know Jackson Thomas is the quarterback. Cameron Dartes went down on a sack that he got earlier in the game, taking a little precaution, not putting him back in the ball game yet. We might see him later on in the second half, but for now it's Jackson Thomas's show. He's at shotgun. Braylon Morgan in the running back to his left. There's a the snap. Hands it off to the stretch play. Braylon Morgan right side looking for a block for man and from able to pick up one yard on the play. This will be second and nine from the 23-yard line. He just needed one more block right there and could have picked up a few more yards. Yeah, what uh, offensive coach told me this way back in the day. He said, man, if everybody do their job, you, we should all we should score on every play because everybody needs to do their job. One guy miss on offense, you have a bad play. So the Bears still pick up one yard, second and nine from the 24. They're heading into the horseshoe away from the interstate here at Brex Memorial Stadium. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Jackson Thomas shotgun. This time he's going to drop back, looking to throw it. Throws over the middle field. Got Brandon Hubix the tight end at the 35-yard line. Makes a man miss, 40-45, and that's where he'll go out. A pickup of 20 on the play for Hubix. First down, Catholic High. Hey, to see that big man get down and run that play, I love it. And we're going with the hurry up with the tempo on it. Hey, man, the Bears are on all cylinders tonight. Love that right there, getting their tight end some action over the middle. I love it. Going with the hurry up now. <laughs> Bears at the 45-yard line, first and 10, 6.30 to go till halftime. And a quick snap right there. They're going to say a false start against the Bears. Our third penalty of the night will push us back five yards to the 40. That's where we'll have it first and 15 with 6.30 to go till halftime. Don't forget, folks, at halftime, we're going to have Father Michael Alello in the booth. Talk a little band showcase action going up. Talk about maybe our favorite Bible verses. Mine's Matthew 7, 7. We'll ask him what his is. <laughs> I Philipp think he'll love that. Philippians 4, 13 was always, you know, exactly. a classic. So Jackson Thomas at shotgun. Two receivers to the near side. Hubix goes in motion. He's the H-back to the left. Here comes Grisapi as well. They're going to hand it off to Josh Parker up the middle. 
dive plays. Able to pick up three on the play, almost back to the line of scrimmage. So it'll be second and 11 at the 44-yard line. Yeah, I want to see Jackson maybe throw it a little bit. So there's a man down on the field. So we'll take a Moro physical therapy timeout as well. Catholic High leads 17 to nothing. We'll be right back. Bruin Broadcast Network. Bolton's Health Mart Drugstore is a proud sponsor of this year's Catholic High Grizzly Bears football team. Bolton's, like Catholic High, is a part of Baton Rouge's history and has long been one of our city's neighborhood pharmacies. The next time you need a unique gift idea or for any medical prescription need, think of Bolton's Health Mart Pharmacy, 2958 Perkins Road. For delivery in South Baton Rouge area, call us, 343-4869, 343-4869. Bolton's Health Mart, peace of mind today and into next century. Hennessy Bourgeois has been doing business in South Louisiana for nearly 100 years. Their team of CPAs and business advisors offer specialized skills and expertise to help clients reach their greatest potential. With three offices across South Louisiana and 120 employees, Hennessy Bourgeois provides prompt and professional services of the highest quality to businesses in a wide array of industries. Hennessy Bourgeois, CPAs and business advisors, a proud sponsor of Catholic High Football. Lamar Advertising is a proud corporate partner of Catholic High School. Since 1902, Lamar has been on a mission to partner and grow with local businesses by providing an unmatched out-of-home advertising service to all our clients. A Lamar sign is the most effective way for your business to get your message to the community. Check us out online at Lamar.com or give us a call at 225-752-0200. Lamar.com or give us a call 225-752-0200. At Lamar, we are outdoor. This is Brian Hightower, Catholic High School Class of 1997 and the Director of Alumni Relations. The CHS Alumni Association provides opportunities throughout the year for CHS alumni to reconnect with classmates and further their commitment to the mission of Catholic High School and the Brothers of the Sacred Heart. With more than 9,500 alumni worldwide, the association wishes the 2018 Football Bears the best of luck as they defend the state title. For more information on upcoming events, go to CatholicHigh.org. And remember, it's more than four. It's a lifetime. Go Bears. Welcome back, Bear fans. Catholic High Football, 104.5 ESPN, Bruin Broadcast.com, and WBTR. Javion Hughes for the Griffins, a little shaken up right there. Bears have it 12 and second and 12 from the 43. Jackson Thomas drops back, looking for the screen play, and just gets the ball away to Braylon Morgan. Great job right there by Jackson Thomas, avoiding the pressure and just throwing the football at the feet of Braylon Morgan. Yeah, throw it away, give us another opportunity. Uh, we did have some trouble last week with some interceptions. We had three interceptions last week. So just to see him make some good, sound decisions, plus he's a junior. So I, it's always good to see that by, by a junior. Yeah, that's always one when you do the screen pass. You know, you fake the handoff or you fake the counter, and you're not looking at the D-line no. at all. No. And right there, they were right on, right top, on top of him right there. Bears will have it third and 12 from the 43-yard line. 5.52 to go till halftime. Jackson Thomas at shotgun. Sends a man in motion to the near side. That's Edward Francis. So now we have three receivers to the near side. Jackson Thomas drops back. He'll throw the quick pass. Brethren Morgan near sideline. 40, 45, 50 is where he goes down. Pickup of eight. There is a flag on the play. We'll wait to see what happens. A man is down for the Griffins as well. Get ready to go to add, guys. So we'll wait to see an injured timeout. So we'll take another Moro physical therapy timeout. 5.54 to go till halftime. Bears lead 17 to nothing. We'll be right back. At Spine and Sports Injury and Rehab Centers, we are a multidisciplinary practice providing comprehensive treatment plans for all your injury needs. Whether sports, auto, or work-related injuries, we at Spine and Sports care for anything from minor spine and extremity injuries to severe herniated or bulging discs and spine and extremity injuries. Dr. Shay Corbin is a certified chiropractic sports physician and offers non-surgical options for all your injury needs. Visit www.docshay.com. Welcome to Slocal. Slocal is an educational initiative that allows you to give back to a school while supporting local businesses. Sign up in three easy steps, and 25% of your subscription will go back to a school of your choice, all while you enjoy savings and offers from your favorite local businesses. It's as simple as finding a business, opening the page, and redeeming the offer. Go to www.getslocalapp.com to find out more today. It's game day. A day that should be spent in the living room, not the kitchen. So next game, you just worry about the score because we've got the food covered. 
with hand battered, cooked to order, always fresh, never ever frozen chicken fingers, craveable cane sauce, crispy crinkle cut fries, and jugs of freshly made tea and lemonade. Raising Cane's chicken fingers, one love. <laughs> Welcome back, Bear fans. Catholic High Football, 104.5 ESPN, BruinBroadcast.com, NWBTR, 19-144, Baton Rouge and Ascension. Catholic High on the run, had a holding penalty, so the Bears had it third and 12. Now they'll have it third and 14 from the 41-yard line, 5.37 to go till halftime. Jackson Thomas is at shotgun, two receivers to the far side. That's his right. Running back lined up in the backfield to his left. Braylon Morgan now goes in motion to the far sideline. There's the shotgun snap. He'll roll right, looking for a receiver down the field, looking for a man. Now just throws it under and throws it over the head of Braylon Morgan. Incomplete. Bears will have it fourth down. A late decision, a late throw. If he's going to make that decision, he needs to do it quicker and be more decisive when he does. But that's from a, a younger quarterback. An older quarterback would probably want to hey, get that ball to that guy quicker. Yeah, but you know, you know what I did like to see there? Went through his progressions yes. as well, so yeah. that's nice to see. So now we'll see Cole Kazanoff come on to punt. He is leading the area in 5A, 4A with over 47 yards a punt. He'll be standing back at the 26-yard line. Back to receive for the Griffins will be number five. That's Terry Matthews and Bears are in a very unique formation. Something new here. Coach Eric Held's whipping up. But he'll punt it away. Wobbly kick. It'll bounce at the 28-yard line, but takes a huge bear bounce. Lands nice. at the 28, and then will go out of bounds at the 10-yard line. A 59-yard punt, give or take. So, awesome. hey, folks, it's more than four. You may have noticed last week that LSU crowned a homecoming king and queen. CHS fans definitely noticed that two of the men on the court were Catholic high grads. One of these two was elected homecoming king. Representing CHS on the court were Andrew Schenever and Daniel Wolf from the CHS class of 2015. And Daniel Wolf was named LSU Homecoming King. Congratulations to both Daniel Wolf and Andrew Schenever. It's more than four. So the Griffins will take over on the 11 yard line, 5.05 to go till halftime. Handoff, far sideline. That's Bladen Lewis. He's able to pick up nine on the play. It'll be second and one from the 20. Yeah, good job by Bladen Lewis. Hey, he's making he's making his, his presence known in this game, but we have to be sound in our technique. So we have to make a show and come up and make those tackles, those hard tackles. So they're going to say he picked up nine, second and one. They'll hand it off again to him, left side, met by the Bear defenders, now cuts back, trying to find a yard. It'll be really close if he got one or not, Kevin. I think they are going to say that he did get it, so a first down for the Griffins. Yeah, Bears are doing a great job with stopping people this year. They're doing an absolutely wonderful job. People are not getting a whole lot of yards on us, and I absolutely love it. They're only averaging about 140 yards. We're averaging about 224 a game. So that says a lot about our our, um, our stopping people. And the Bears are, are line. Defensive line is doing a great job this year by Coach Dukes. Coach Dukes, baby, always doing a good job. Griffins have it first and 10, 4.15 to go till halftime. Draymond Rose in the shotgun, two receivers to his left, one of the near side. Once again, they'll hand it off right side. That's Bladen Lewis, and he'll pick up three on the play. So it'll be second and seven for the Griffins. Yeah, no late penalties, too. I saw a, little, a guy come in late, but we have to be smart. We have to really be smart and don't, don't have any extra penalties because we have a lot the first first quarter. Yeah, we're definitely not following Kevin's keys to limit the penalties so far tonight. <laughs> not doing a bad job. No, not at all. But we are not losing the penalty battle yes. so far. Yes. So Draymond Rowe will have it second and six from the 26. He's heading out of the horseshoe here at Brex Memorial Stadium, heading towards the interstate. 3.38 to go till halftime. Bears lead 17 to nothing. Monroe walks up to the line of scrimmage. He's got two receivers to the far side. That's his left, one to the near side. Jacoby Williams in the backfield. Quick throw now. That's number nine on the catch, Grant Arnett, and he's across the 40, and he picks up a first down after the completion of 14. Yeah, the secondary in this one is that's what we put up there, the sound secondary game. We, we, we do a better job in the, in the second half, so we, we're going to make some adjustments, I think, and I know we're going to um, do some great, great jobs in the second half. Something on those quick passes, you know, you get a linebacker maybe spreading out immediately yes. on the play. Opportunity yes. for a quick interception, interception here would be something fantastic. So they'll have it first and 10 from the 40, three minutes to go till halftime. Snap was a little bit off to his right. Draymond Rose trying to throw it down the field. It was intended for number nine again. Grant Arnett right through his hands. Incomplete pass. Second and 10 at the 40 for the Griffins. Yeah, we had like a two deep, and in that two deep, they have different pockets. And that was a pocket that he saw. It was like that out, a deep out.
or deep corner route, that is always something we got to cover cover for. <laughs> Second and ten for the Griffins at the 40-yard line. Incomplete pass. Stop the play clock at two minutes, 57 seconds. Trey Monroe looking to the side and looking for the play. Bears lead 17 to nothing on the two Josh Parker touchdowns and the Cole Kazanoff field goal. Monroe has two receivers to his left, H back to his right, running back to his right as well. Snap with a little bit off. He hands it off. Number seven, Jacoby Williams, crosses the line of scrimmage, and Coach Fertitta will take a timeout. So we'll take a timeout on the field, and we'll take a timeout in the booth. Bears lead 17 to nothing. We'll be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. At the Bone and Joint Clinic of Baton Rouge, we treat the athlete inside all of us. Whether it's an injury from a game-breaking play or a fall in the driveway, we're ready to treat all of your aches and breaks. With locations in Baton Rouge, Prairieville, and Walker, our 17 orthopedic specialists share a common goal to keep you moving. Orthopedic specialists are on hand Fridays from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. at our Prairieville location. Find us online at BJCBR.com. The Bone and Joint Clinic of Baton Rouge. Move more. Hurt less. Calandro Supermarket is proudly celebrating 77 years in business with the best service, quality, and selection in Baton Rouge since 1941. And in those 77 years, two generations of Calandro men who graduated as proud CHS Bear alums, and we'll all tell you that we owe our success to the wonderful education we received at Catholic High. So whether it's at one of our two local grocery stores or at the CHS football games, we'd love to see you and join you in cheering. Go Bears! Welcome back, Bear fans, to Catholic High Football here. 104.5 ESPN, BruinBroadcast.com, and WBTR Channel 19, Baton Rouge. 144 Ascension, 2.47 to go till halftime. Bears lead 17 to nothing over the Griffins, but they are driving left to right right now. Third and seven from the 43-yard line. Trey Monroe claps his hands, trying to get the Bear defense to jump off sides. Great job maintaining their position. He's got two receivers to his left, two to his right. Running back Bladen Lewis in the backfield is to his right as well. There's the shotgun snap. He's rolling back, looking for a man down the field. He'll throw it short and tenant for Terry Matthews incomplete. It'll be fourth and seven for the Griffins. Yeah, it looks like a, a deep man under. So it, look, they have man, but then they let the other ones go zone. So I think they were just trying to try some different coverages, which I like because we have to give different quarterbacks a different look if we're going to get further in the playoffs. We can't give them generic defenses, and you have to get, uh, uh, do help defenses. Great job right there by Coach Fertitta as well to take that time out. The Bears are going to get the ball back. There's two minutes and 40 seconds. Then they'll go into our favorite, that two-minute two offense, minutes. which we think they run yes. so well. Braylon Morgan back to receive the punt. He's at the 22-yard line. Once again, Devin Tier to punt. This time a good snap. He's able to get the kickoff, and he kicks a booming kick. Brushes Braylon Morgan all the way back, and the ball will go into the end zone, and the Bears will take over at the 20-yard line. Hey, Bear fans, it's more than four. Two members from the most recent CHS graduating class, the class of 2018, are already making waves at LSU. Drake Brignac and Paul Casillas were recently elected to the LSU Student Senate at UCFY Senators. With more than 5,800 freshmen at LSU, these two men were chosen to advocate for student needs and actively work to develop policy with university officials. Well done, Senator Drake and Senator Paul from the CHS class of 2008. Remember, Bear fans, it's more than four. It's a lifetime. So the Bears have the football 20-yard line, two minutes and 29 seconds to go for the drive till halftime, and we lead 17 to nothing. Shotgun snap to Jackson Thomas, hands it off to Josh Parker up the middle, crosses the 20, and he breaks away. 40, crosses midfield. He's got two men to beat. 30, 25, 20. 15, 10, and 6 does it again. Put six more on the board, and Catholic Kai takes the 23 to nothing lead over the Griffins. Hey, that's a good job by that young man, and I know for sure he got a shot this year. Rumble, young man, rumble, because that's been a call all this year by him. Hey, he just takes it, and he just runs hard. Good job. 80 yards on the play. Second time tonight he's taking it deep and far on the opening handoff of a drive. Yes. Josh Parker came to play tonight. You know, I might have kind of ruined it for him a little bit. I went to practice and said, hey, Josh, just letting you know, 299 yards, you get 1,000. He goes, really? Yeah, really. Huh. <laughs> taking it to heart. I'm going to tell him next week he needs 1,000 more. Why not? So yes. Cole Kazanoff will come on to kick the extra point. Number 91 for the Griffins, Shane Levy coming off the field. It has an equipment malfunction, so he'll come off for a second. 
Jackson Thomas will be the holder. Elijah Reams will do the snap. 2-10 to go till halftime. Bears have taken the 23 to nothing lead, waiting on the extra point. There's the snap, hold, kick is up, and she's good. So with 2-10 to go till halftime, Bears 24, Griffins nothing. We'll be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. Dozy Place in Mid-City Baton Rouge is your family-friendly neighborhood steakhouse right around the corner from Catholic High. Just like the Bears, Doze is all in on their commitment to a winning team. They hand-cut their steaks daily with beef loins that are aged at least 21 days. So head to Doze before or after the game and help them keep the winning tradition. Doze Eat Place, located at 3723 Government Street, or call 387-5331 or visit dozebatonrouge.com. Catechai Football, a tradition. The Fourier Insurance Agency knows about traditions as the Fourier Insurance Agency has been serving the insurance needs of Baton Rouge since 1946. The Fourier Agency can use the experience to give you the right amount of insurance tailored to your specific needs. For your home, auto, boat, or for your commercial insurance requirements, including general liability, property, and workers' compensation. The Fourier Insurance Agency uses the most respected and stable companies in the world to protect your future and your tradition. And go Bears! And welcome back, Bear fans, to Catholic High Football, 104.5 ESPN, BruinBroadcast.com, and WBTR Channel 19, 144 in Ascension. Josh Parker scores for the third time of the night with the 80-yard scramble to put the Bears up 24 to nothing. And now Matthew Goodson will kick off from the 40 into the horseshoe at the concrete coliseum known as Memorial Stadium. A high kick. And it's going to be caught at the one-yard line. He's going to bring it out. That's number five, Matthews. He crosses the 20, 30, 40. He's got to beat Matthew Goodson, tries to leap him, and he's able to. And he takes it all the way to the 41-yard line. A return of 59 yards right there by number five, Terry Matthews, for the Griffins. And with 1.55 to go, they're in bare territory and a chance to score before halftime. Yeah, you got to make sure you tap the guy. Look. It was basically containment. He got outside of containment, and he was able to run down the field on it. But you have to know after a big play, you have to make sure you keep him in the end zone and defend. So they just kind of got beside themselves on that one. But now we have poor field position. The defense needs to make a play right here so we can go into the half. You know, that one really reminded you of the opening kickoff versus U High. You know, Christian yes. Harris got it right at the one-inch yard line right. and took it all the way. So Goodson just missed booting it all the way to the end zone. So Dre Monroe and the Griffin offense will come out. First and 10 at the 40. They are in Catholic High territory heading towards the interstate here at Memorial. Shotgun snap. He'll keep it, throws the quick pass to the far sideline. Number five, Terry Matthews makes the catch at the 40. Picks up six. It'll be second and four from the 34-yard line. Yeah, good defend by that corner out there. He made the contact. Hey, it was five yards, but he didn't let him get beyond five yards. So I like that he made the tackle right there and gave us an opportunity. He didn't give up a big play on that one. Second and four from the 34. First downs at the 30. Stayed in bounds, so it's one minute, 28 seconds. The clock's running here. We're in the second quarter. 5-5-A five, five, district battle. Shotgun snap, and Dre goes down with the sack. He tried to do the QB run, and Elijah Reams and Christian Menino are there to bring him down. And Coach Fertitta takes a timeout on the field, and we'll take a timeout in the booth, Kev. So with 1-11 to go till halftime, Bears lead 24 to nothing. We'll be right back. After decades of duplicating, we're going digital, providing our customers with the latest technology and exceptional customer service. Before, you know, years ago, we just simply used um, a copy machine to copy, but now we're able to copy and print and scan and email, and that just, and with one machine, that makes everything easier. Not only do they sell the product and guarantee it, they back it up and they service that product. Call us now for all of your digital office products. BRDP, experience no one can copy. This is Director of Advancement Jamie Seeger from the class of 1990 for the Fund for Catholic High School. Since 1894, the Brothers of the Sacred Heart have relied on gifts providing financial support to keep CHS strong. Your gift to the fund is essential to student success and allows our students to discover their true potential for success in life. Every gift counts and you can make a difference with your generous support through the legacy of giving at CHS. Giving is easy. Go to catholichigh.org to make your gift today. Parents, alumni, friends, together for every student, every year. All right, Kevin, 1.15 to go till halftime. Bears lead 24 to nothing, but the Griffins have the football third and seven from the 37-yard line. This is where that black hat defense really needs to step up and stop them. Yeah, we just need to make a stop right here and take the momentum back from them. 
Draymond Rosen, shotgun, man goes in motion. He'll drop back, looking to throw it down the field. Throws it intended for number eight, Derek Youngblood, and the Bears get the interception. Number five, Taiwan McDowell, and the Bears will get the football back with 107 to go till halftime. Hey, good job, young man. Hey, prime time, big time players make big time games, and I'm going to say happy birthday to that young man. Ta- happy birthday, Taiwan McDowell, man. Hey, congratulations, young man. You're a great young man. Hey, and boy, to make a play on your birthday, man. And thank you for the present. You gave me an interception <laughs> on your birthday. <laughs> hey, you know, and we just talked about it on the previous drive. If you're in the yeah. right position, those short passes, yes. they're either going to get deflected or come yes. off the receiver if you're right there yes. for the opportunity. And leads the team in interceptions this year. He has three interceptions this year. So the Bears will get it back with 107 to go till halftime. They're at the 29-yard line. We'll see if Jackson Thomas, the junior quarterback, can lead them to put some more points on the board as we lead 24 to nothing here versus the Griffins. Thomas is at shotgun, claps his hands, waits on the snap. He's just going to give it to Josh Parker, left side. He breaks away again, 40-45, taken down at the 47-yard line. One man tripped him up, but he was almost able to do it. So first down for the Bears at the 48-yard line, waiting on the sticks to move, 58 Seconds till halftime. Jackson Thomas waiting on the snap. Gets the shotgun snap. Now he's going to roll to his right, looking for a man to throw down the field. And he throws the short pass to Forrest Roy, who's just short of the sticks, nine yards. And now there's a scuffle in the backfield. Josh Parker in number three for the Dutch Towns. That's Spears back there getting a little scruffle. Yeah, what you do is hold that guy down, and so you can. You, it, it, they teach us that. Fall on that guy and hold on to him and hold the, hold the ball. Jackson Thomas shotgun. Now he's rolling to the left. He'll throw it. Solomon Singleton makes the catch at the 40-35. Tackle from behind at the 30. But that will be a first down, Catholic High. And now the referee will throw a flag. He threw it by Josh Parker and Spears. We'll wait to see what happens. But let's set the stage here before we find out what that was. It's 23 seconds to go till halftime. Bears are going to have it first and 10, waiting to see where the spot will be if the penalties on both of them. And it will be unsportsmanlike conduct on Josh Parker and on Reggie okay. Spears. So the penalties will Solomon. offset. And Catholic High will take a timeout. So the Bears are going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout, and we'll be right back here before halftime on the Bruin Broadcast Network. Join us for Catholic High School's 32nd Annual Open House, Thursday, November 8th, from 4.30 to 7 p.m. Young men in grades 6 through 8th and their parents are invited to tour the campus, meet CHS faculty and students, and experience firsthand what makes the CHS experience so special. CHS Open House, Thursday, November 8th, from 4.30 to 7 p.m. For more information, visit catholichigh.org. Calandro Supermarket is proudly celebrating 77 years in business with the best service, quality, and selection in Baton Rouge since 1941. And in those 77 years, two generations of Calandro men have graduated as proud CHS Bear alums, and we'll all tell you that we owe our success to the wonderful education we received at Catholic High. So whether it's at one of our two local grocery stores or at the CHS football games, we'd love to see you and join you in cheering. Go Bears! Welcome back, fans. Catholic High football, 23 seconds to go till halftime. The Bears are driving here, up 24 to nothing on the Griffins. Jackson Thomas, shotgun quarterback, three receivers to his right. Jake Outlaws in the backfield. Oh, that's Barhorse. He rolls right. He pumps, looking for a man down the field. He has the receiver at the goal line. An incomplete through the hands. Intended for Force Roy. And it'll be third and 10 for the Bears. Second and 10 with 15 seconds to go at the 31-yard line. So close, Kev, so close. The placement, though, Dixon, did you see the placement? He put it to where nobody could get it but the receiver and make a good catch on it. Hey, man, Jackson has a lot of upside to him as a young guy. He really do. 15 seconds, second and 10 from the 31. The Bears are going to go quads to the right side now, far side of the field. Jackson Thomas is at shotgun, gets the snap. Now he throws it. He's going to fake it. Now he's looking down the field again. He has the receiver in the end zone, 84, Jalen Toastin. Touchdown, Catholic Kai. Hey, that's the way you do. You got to make a big play right in the seams. I haven't seen that by the pass this year, but it may take a Jackson Thomas to make a play. Hey, good job, man. The protege to the general. I love it, baby. I love it. Toastin with his second touchdown reception of the season puts the Bears up 30 to nothing with eight seconds to go till halftime. 
What a great job right there by Jackson Thomas leading the Bears all the way down the field to put points on the board. Thomas will come in to hold. Kazanoff will kick the extra point. Elijah Reams a snap. Kick is up. And she's good. So with eight seconds to go till halftime, Bears 31, Griffins nothing. We'll be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. At Spine and Sports Injury and Rehab Centers, we are a multidisciplinary practice providing comprehensive treatment plans for all your injury needs. Whether sports, auto, or work-related injuries, we at Spine and Sports care for anything from minor spine and extremity injuries to severe herniated or bulging discs and spine and extremity injuries. Dr. Shay Corbin is a certified chiropractic sports physician and offers non-surgical options for all your injury needs. Visit www.docshay.com. Now you can shop online with Marucci Sports this school year. Marucci is committed to outfitting Bear fans with the highest quality products by now offering its premier line of fan apparel for all of our CHS athletic teams online. Log on maruchisports.itemorder.com and enter CHS Bears in all caps in the sales code to view this year's entire line of fan gear. That's maruchisports.itemorder.com and enter Welcome back, Bear Nation, to Catholic High Football here, 104.5 ESPN, BruinBroadcast.com, and WBTR. Eight seconds to go till halftime, and Catholic High has taken the commanding lead, 31 to nothing over the Dutchtown Griffins. Hey, folks, stick around at halftime. Special guest in the booth, Father Michael Alello, to join us. So we're going to talk about the band and the showcase coming up and everything that's great about the Grizzly Band from Clay Cut. Maybe we'll even work on a new name for him. Goodson kicks off, kicks a ground ball dead up the middle of the field. Terry Matthews will take it at the 17-yard line. Tries to make a man miss, cut outside. There's a block in the back. That should nice. be a flag. But he goes down at the 24-yard line, and that will bring us to the halftime. So through the first half of play here at Memorial Stadium, it's Catholic Kai, 31, Dutchtown Griffins nothing. We'll be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. It's game day. A day that should be spent in the living room, not the kitchen. So next game, you just worry about the score because we've got the food covered. With hand-battered, cooked-to-order, always fresh, never, ever frozen chicken fingers, craveable cane sauce, crispy crinkle-cut fries, and jugs of freshly made tea and lemonade. Raisin Cane's chicken fingers, one love. <laughs> This is Director of Advancement Jamie Seeger from the Class of 1990 for the Fund for Catholic High School. Since 1894, the Brothers of the Sacred Heart have relied on gifts providing financial support to keep CHS strong. Your gift to the fund is essential to student success and allows our students to discover their true potential for success in life. Every gift counts and you can make a difference with your generous support through the legacy of giving at CHS. Giving is easy. Go to catholichigh.org to make your gift today. Parents, alumni, friends, together for every student, every year. Join us for Catholic High School's 32nd Annual Open House, Thursday, November 8th from 4.30 to 7 p.m. Young men in grades 6 through 8th and their parents are invited to tour the campus, meet CHS faculty and students, and experience firsthand what makes the CHS experience so special. CHS Open House, Thursday, November 8th from 4.30 to 7 p.m. For more information, visit catholichigh.org. Football and investing have something in common. The stronger the team, the stronger the results. Let the team at Altus Wealth Management of Jesse Daigle, Mickey Guidry, Ronnie Brown, Brad Ewing, Wally McMakin, Jeremy Perk, John Reeder, and John Stewart be on your side for all of your investment needs. From IRA to 401k, Altus Wealth is the team for you. Call them today, 225-201-9300 or visit altuswealthmgt.com. Investment advisory services offered through Genos Wealth Management member FINRA SIPC. And welcome back, Bear fans, to the Raising Canes halftime show here from Catholic High School. We're at Memorial Stadium. We have a special guest, Father Michael Lillo, class of 1998. Bears are up 31 to nothing. Father, what's your first half analysis of the game? The first half analysis of the game is the band has been exceptional oh. tonight exceptional so we're going to talk a lot about the band the brunettes are about to reform 
the band has their showcase coming up. Tell the folks at home what what that what does that mean for the band the showcase? Sure. So every year the band is actually working to perfect their show that they start during band camp in the summer, and so every game they're working to put an extra piece onto the field and build that show throughout the season to prepare for showcase. Showcases like the Super Bowl for bands. It's 30 bands gathered across the state in Lafayette at the University of Louisiana, and they perform in front of a great crowd and uh, spend a day seeing other bands, hearing other bands, and hopefully. Uh, Hopefully placing up in the in the top ten. Yeah, we've been at practice lately. We've been hearing them. They're practicing on the baseball field right behind the football facility. You know, I, I don't think we can give away a little bit of everything, but I saw there might be a 3D dimension this year coming to the showcase. There and might be a little movement there, a little movement, a little lifting, a little settling, a little <laughs> bit of this and that. We don't want to give that away till, uh, till after the game, so stay around. Yeah, so after the game, folks, we want you to stick around on BruinBroadcast.com and all those watching on WBTR. The band will perform their will. Showcase, showcase piece. Now, any will that give away anything to the other no, bands? No, no, no. The, the other bands have been working on their thing, so everybody does their own thing. Uh, but eventually get there that day and you get to see them at their finest, have they fine-tuned everything and pulled out the mistakes and hopefully tuned it up, and it's a great show. So another thing tonight, we're also going to have members of the alumni band that are here tonight, sure. alumni flag girls, alumni flag brun- brunettes, and members of the drum corps. You wishing you could be down yeah, there a little you bit? Yeah, you know, I, mean, I, I didn't realize we were doing this at halftime. Uh, that didn't register. Maybe it was just a, a good decision on my part that uh, I wouldn't have to perform because marching in tonight about killed me. So we're going to make it work. Well, I think you would have been fantastic. You know what everything's going on down there. So t- just remind the folks at home right now, you know, a class of 1998 graduate, widely considered, you know, a top five class. It's not the class of 05, but it's pretty no, it's, good. It's much better than class of 05. Yeah, class of 98, great class. Uh, you know, obviously the 90s were the best, you know, the <laughs> people that came after us. Well, you, it is what it is. But, no, class of 98, loved it and uh, always always blessed for the opportunity to come back and do a little ministry at Catholic High at the alma mater and make a little difference in the world. And now you're the head pastor at St. Thomas More as well. Correct. Uh, pastor at St. Thomas More uh, for the last almost uh, over a year now, a little over a year. So I've uh, been working through a, a transition and, and glad to be there and looking forward to a great future at Thomas More. So tell the people like me, all those watching at home and those listening on 104.5 ESPN that weren't in the band, you know, what are the different sections that they're going to be seeing and hearing this evening if they're watching after the game? Sure. So you got the, the percussion section. That's the drum line. Those are the guys that uh, they're typically the most cocky folks in the band. That's how we refer to the drum line. <laughs> You got your brass, your trumpets, your tubas, you know, trombones. Trombone is obviously the best instrument in the really? band, uh, without a doubt, the best instrument in the band. Your woodwinds, those are the quiet folks on the field. You, you may hear them a little bit, but uh, really the low brass and the brass are the folks you hear in addition to the percussion. You know, and since you were the, in the band as well, I know we've expanded. When you come to a game or you might go to showcase, you'll see sure. on the sideline, What's all going on there's over a, there, huh? There's a whole other department on the sideline. The pit is the, the folks on the sideline, and uh, it's a group of young people. They don't march during the game, but they are now an integral part of the unit that comes together to form a great show. And tell us about our band director at Catholic High, Professor Messina, and what a job he's done under his tutelage. Oh, yeah, Professor Messina. He would love that title there. <laughs> Mark's done a great job. He took over after Dwayne LeBlanc, who followed the great J.R. Miller. Uh, you know, Calakai has been blessed to have amazing band directors, and I look back on my time and, and my time at band is, is just part of a huge part of my Calakai career. So it's a, it's been a real blessing to be a part of the band. It's for those of us that might not be the most athletic. It gives us a chance to uh, use our gifts in a different way. So we have a lot of the alumni band members are going out in the field right now. We want to try to mention some of those people that are out there right now, if we can just go through that sure, real got, quick with the members at the home. Got a few people out there. Helen Alford, Mike Boudreaux out there, Josh Campisi, Andrew Setatal, Ryan Harb, uh, Jonathan Heron, Evan James, and Brian Long. Daniel Orso is out there as well. Matthew Seeger, Brody Vance, Mark Ballou, Colin Campbell, Hannah Keller, Bailey Landry, Michael Marquette, Josh Mayo, Race Piku, Jordan Smith, Greg Stevens, Mark Thibodeau, and a few more. Yeah, who we got Colin DeVille out there as well. Uh, Gabe is out there, Robert. And, uh, oh, look, I'm, I'm supposed to be out there, but here I am up here. Uh, Scott Manning is not on the field tonight. Please note that Mr. Manning is not on the field. He's up in the booth as well. Peter Secard, William Thomas, Devin Touye, Chris Veluzo, and Justin Alford. And as we look at that list tonight, one of the great things is we've got guys from the 80s out there tonight, uh, which is pretty awesome. And then uh, actually Mike Boudreaux from 1967 playing the best instrument all, playing the trombone out there. So just a wonderful testament 
to music education and to Catholic High and its support of the arts. Yeah, it's so fantastic. You know, you come to the Fine Arts Building at Catholic High, the big music room, the choir, the Fine Arts Building over there. And you always wonder, you know, when you go on the Catholic High Open House, which is coming up soon sure. next month, the Open House, they're going to get to see the band and all the members in there performing. And really, it's such a cool part of the school. Most of the things are classroom. Then you walk into this huge two-story room that even has a little – uh, cabana at the top, I would call her Miss Terracina. Yeah, I don't know if I'd call it a cabana, but you know, back in the day, lots of interesting things happened from up at the top that probably uh, OSHA would not approve of these days. But you know, we are truly blessed at Calakai to have an amazing arts program. We've got an awesome band, we've got an awesome choir, we've got a great arts program. You know, and those are the things that allow guys uh, to have different opportunities to use their gifts, and, and that's one of the great things about Calakai. Whether you're an athlete, whether you're an artist, whether you're a quiz bowl guy, whatever you do, there is a place for you at Calakai, and it's one of the real blessings of our school. Yeah, and I know, you know, and, and they say, too, even if you don't have what you want to do, get four or five guys together. <laughs> and start it. And yeah. start it. Well, Find well, a professor, a teacher, or whoever you want, and go start it. You know, back in the day when we were in school, there was no robotics club, but that's kind of a thing now, and so it's great to see see the guys using their gifts for different things. And no Bruin broadcast. Obviously, all the young men that are running the Bruin Broadcast Network trying to make you sound good right now, trying to make hey, you look good hey, right now. Hey, they do a great job. They came and uh, broadcasted one of my parish missions at St. Aloysius uh, back in Lent last year. So they really do an amazing job uh, to put these things together. I don't know how they do it, uh, but they do a great job. You know, sometimes you don't have to know how things are done. No, it's true. It just happened, Father. Would you, you know, would you agree with that? I read that in a good book somewhere, I yeah. believe. I read that in a good book. Most selling book of all time. So tell That's the right. folks, too, a little bit about you. You know, sure. you're obviously one of the one of the favorites. You did most of our senior retreats, most of our retreats. Obviously, when yeah. I was there, uh, we really become connected to you. What's coming up in the world of Father Michael Lello that the folks that aren't at St. Thomas More yes. maybe can't make it up there, but maybe could – follow you maybe sure you know, sure that um, well you know i am uh, been pastor of st thomas more a little over a year now and uh, we have great things happening our school is doing great our parish is growing uh, our area is growing and we're really excited about what the future of that side of town looks like and so if you're if you're a young person looking for a great home looking for a great parish or a school to settle your family in i'd love to bring you around uh, st thomas more and give you a tour of the neighborhood and help you find a place to settle uh, i do 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 a little social media work from time to time. You know, in the 21st century here, uh, evangelization looks very different than it did in Jesus' time. Jesus <laughs> gathered them around the Sea of Galilee, and he preached to them and talked to them. And uh, today now I have SoundCloud that I have a subscription for my weekly homilies that folks can sign up for and get, get the homily as they drive to work on Monday morning. Now, Dixon, just be reminded that does not count for your Sunday obligation, it not. but it is a good opportunity on Monday or midweek to kind of refocus your day and go back to what we were supposed to be about uh, and what God is calling us to be about. So it's a wonderful way to do some ministry. And tell the folks, you, know, you didn't tell them what's the address. They were sure, going to look sure. for that. You could go to PadreHooch.com. Don't ask where my nickname came from, but it did come from the <laughs> band. Uh, it goes all the way back from my high school days, but that's uh, PadreHooch.com. And you can sign up uh, for those subscriptions to get my weekly homilies or Facebook or Twitter or um, Instagram, all of those things. H-O-O-C-H -H is, is the way. Padre, P-A-D-R-E. First time I met you, I think it was sophomore retreat, and they just started Maybe yelling, so. hooch. And yeah. I was like, I don't know what the heck was going on. Like There's a whole celebrity world. walks in the room, and here he comes. A Father whole Lilla. generation, whole generation of young people across our diocese that aren't so young anymore like yourself. Uh, that they, they don't really actually know my name is Michael, so it's kind of humorous. But, hey, whatever gets folks attentive and uh, gets them moving to Jesus. And one thing, you know, you talked about at Catholic High School, we had Principal Harvey in the booth a couple weeks ago. And just what I really love, obviously I was an athlete I'm yep. on the teams, right? Right, right. Let's and, use that. And, That's yeah, a yeah, yeah, loose yeah, term there, ooh, athlete. Yeah. Yes, yes. You know, <laughs> band folks consider themselves athletes, and I don't think people realize that. But these young people who get out here on the field, they're practicing just as much as the football team in the same heat, in the same weather, to learn their places, to learn their music. And, and, and you know, in the band, we always used to, you know, the guys on the football team, you got to learn a play or two. Our guys are learning where to stand, playing music, marching all at the same time. It's a lot more work. I'm just going to put that out there for the good folks hey, today. you know, I was learning how to stand behind the coach, how to write a play on a kip, uh, clipboard. 
and do everything like that. So, That's hey, right. hey, remember, not easy being a backup quarterback uh, now. Sure, sure. Is that what they <laughs> called you back in the day? Yeah, but what uh-huh. I was what I was getting to. Oh, oh I'm sorry. On, on a, you got a little tangent on a, on there. A classic Father Lillo tangent was. It happens in homily sometimes, too. <laughs> over 15 minutes. Get ready. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> is how much we celebrate at Catholic High everything we do sure. you know i really love that about the school it's not just getting posts on the athletes it's not just getting a post on this sure. it's a little bit of everything i just love that about catholic high yeah it's one of the greatest places uh I, i'm obviously we i think both are a little biased but um we've all had a great experience there and and you know one of the things is catholic high forms young men to grow into great holy men and uh and helps them when they stumble to get back up and not to just stay on the ground and to support them in that and to challenge them to be the men they'd be created to be and whatever their gifts are to find a place to use those gifts and that's why it's a wonderful place so how about maybe just a, maybe just a little tease maybe this uh this weekend's homily we got uh the, the, the blind little, man i believe a little uh, tease yeah. would require me to have something together ah. but uh that might be you just have to come on out to st thomas more we do have our mass in the grass this sunday mass in the grass at 10 a.m over at stm so if you want to come out and have some free food and have mass with it outside we'd love to have you join us at stm so folks that are watching right now on wbrz tr 19144 and on the bruin broadcast network are getting to see our homecoming court getting presented right now is miss hutchinson miss corinne michelle hutchinson just got presented and now coming up will be miss parker elaine wilson and they previously had miss addison camille bruce Miss Catherine Elizabeth Cangelosi and Miss Catherine Marie Cuvion have all been presented so far. And in just a few minutes, Father, we're going to announce the homecoming queen. And this was always a, one of those moments that we waited for as we stood on the field. Now, the young people today, the band kids today, got it so easy. We had to play the same song every year in the background while the girls were presented. So uh, they got it easy now. They don't even play any music while they're standing out there. And the, the ladies from St. Joseph's Academy are being presented. I think they got it pretty easy. I don't know. So what a great night tonight. We have the Grizzly Great Ceremony. We have Homecoming. We have the Band Bruinette Cheerleader Reunion. And we're going to have the showcase after the night. You know, I feel like they called Father Michael Lillo and said, hey, what can we do? And you just said, put it all together in one night and make it great, Brian Hightower. That's exactly what I suggested to Brian. Sure. Yeah, we'll go for that. Yeah. And so far tonight, have you gotten to see some of your fellow former classmates? It's uh, been great. Uh, it's really fun to see folks that uh, that I was in band with, but also to see some of the young people that I got to walk with uh, through their days here at Catholic and some of the young ladies that are back from St. Joseph's Academy here. It's a great group of folks up in the stands. And, you know, people are sometimes hesitant to come back to an alumni event. I haven't played my horn in years. Well, I haven't played in a year. Now, let me tell you, my <laughs> knees hurt, my lips are buzzing, and my whole body is going to be hurting tomorrow. But we've been having a blast over there. And so if you've heard some off notes, I can take credit for probably 95% of them. That's okay. No one's judging you. Know, maybe a little off homily here or there yeah, happens, it, too. It just you know, happens, right? you know. Who be he to cast the first stone? I heard that in a good book right? somewhere. You know, if you're expecting an A-plus every game, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right, before we announce the homecoming queen, I did kind of tease it. You know, I'm a Matthew 7, 7 guy. It's my favorite passage, Philippians 4, 13. Give the folks at home maybe what's Father Lello's. Do you have a go-to passage or a favorite? One of my in favorite the parables. Hold that note, because here is the new homecoming queen. Okay. And our homecoming queen this year is Miss Catherine Elizabeth Cangelosi. Congratulations, Miss Cangelosi, the homecoming queen of 2018. And look how excited she is, and all the fans around her. Good I'm, chance she was a cheerleader. I'm I think. thinking she was a cheerleader because the entire <laughs> cheerleading squad just made a beeline to her. So uh, that's good. That's a good cue right there. But if we want to go back to scripture, I'm always a fan of our Jesus walking on water to our friend Peter, who's petrified and afraid. And Jesus says, "Get out of the boat, Peter. Stop living in the boat. You can't live in the boat. You got to get into the deep." And you know what? That's such a great metaphor for all of us in life. If you want to be secure, if you want to be safe, you're not going to ever get anywhere. The boats are made to get out of the harbor, and so are we get out of the boat. Live your life and enjoy your life and, and, and be blessed as God has done for all of us. Hey, be a blessing. Go be a blessing on someone else. Father Lolo, personally, you've been such a great blessing in my life. Team D sat here, so Dixon Spiritual Advisory Committee it's member. It's a tough team, uh, folks. It's a <laughs> tough team. If anybody would like to take my spot, I'm taking applications. <laughs> Go to CHS Radio Bear at Twitter. 
to do the applications. Father Michael Lillo, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for all your prayers and encouragement for all of our athletes and student athletes out there. Congratulations to Miss Cangelosi, the new homecoming queen of Catholic High. You've been listening to Catholic High Football 104.5 ESPN, BruinBroadcast.com, and WBTR. We'll be right back after this on the Bruin Broadcast Network. This is Brian Hightower, Catholic High School Class of 1997 and the Director of Alumni Relations. The CHS Alumni Association provides opportunities throughout the year for CHS alumni to reconnect with classmates and further their commitment to the mission of Catholic High School and the Brothers of the Sacred Heart. With more than 9,500 alumni worldwide, the association wishes the 2018 Football Bears the best of luck as they defend the state title. For more information on upcoming events, go to CatholicHigh.org. And remember, it's more than four. It's a lifetime. Go Bears! Football and investing have something in common. The stronger the team, the stronger the results. Let the team at Altus Wealth Management of Jesse Daigle, Mickey Guidry, Ronnie Brown, Brad Ewing, Wally McMakin, Jeremy Perk, John Reeder, and John Stewart be on your side for all of your investment needs. From IRA to 401k, Altus Wealth is the team for you. Call them today, 225-201-9300, or visit altuswealthmgt.com. Investment advisory services offered through Genos Wealth Management member FINRA SIPC. Hey, Bear fans, the CHS Bookstore is geared up and ready for the 2018 football season. Arrive at the game in style this season. Come to the bookstore and check out all the latest apparel and fan gear and pack the stands in orange and black. Football tickets can be purchased right here for every game. Show your pride, Bears. Shop in the bookstore school days, Monday through Friday from 7.30 until 3.30. Go Bears! We have a new player on the field, and he's ready for kickoff with a delicious Coca-Cola. The kick. Ice giving him a little trouble as a few cubes shake loose. He's probably going to pour it here. He does. The liquid cuts through an opening. That Coca-Cola's looking pretty good. Can he go all the way? He's going for it! He did it! And just listen to that fizz! Thousands of bubbles jumping in excitement. That might have been the most refreshing thing that I've ever seen. Coca-Cola. Taste the feel. Starting my own business was the hardest thing I've ever done. And the smartest. Building a team, managing cash flow, and creating digital channels is complicated. But my Mid-South Bank business banker has financial tools I've never even seen at other banks and the time to help me use them. Being successful in business today is complicated. Choosing the right bank isn't. Uncomplicate your business banking at Mid-South Bank. Member FDIC. And welcome back, fans, to the Raising Canes halftime show here. Catholic High leads the Dutchtown Griffins 31 to nothing on homecoming, Grizzly Great Night, and band reunion. Kevin, a great first half for the Bears right there. We just got some stats from Professor Messenger up here. Yes. What sticks out to you for that first half of football? The rushing, the dominant rushing game that we have. 262 yards to the Griffins to only have 30, 32. That just says we're dominating that offensive or ground game and we have 107 passing that's not bad and 48 by them and it'll be interesting to see cameron dartes did go down on a sack play where he got yes. kind of hit from behind yes we got word from uh lead trainer eddie bright that it was a high ankle sprain okay. and most likely dartes will be out for the rest of the ball game so Smart. will be jackson thomas's game to go but so far i've been very impressed by the junior quarterback yes he's impressed us both he's made us smile on a lot of occasions he's making good decisions and what i like is that he drove us down and he was able to score on that play hey that you can't ask for much more for a young quarterback especially going into the playoffs where we might need him if uh dartez's ankle is bothering him. yeah and jackson thomas last year when dartez went out started an entire game and had a great job his efficiency was out of the roof and yes. really you know just really impressed you but how about his running ability out of the pocket right there? We know Cameron Dartes yes. is a fantastic runner. Yes. I believe coming to the game, he was uh, third or fourth on, in the, team in the, on the season. Yes. And Jackson Thomas yes. tonight, over 50 yards rushing coming into the game. Yes, getting on the outskirts is what he do well, and he makes decisions throwing the ball in the hole. And here it is, the second key. He has to get that passing game going, and he's throwing those short passes, which is gives confidence to a young quarterback. As you know, you play quarterback. gives him <laughs> gives him a lot of confidence. So, Kevin, I was just about to ask, you know, on those Kevin's keys, the first one was recharging the passing game. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Doing a pretty good job. <laughs> Second one, sound secondary game. Yes. 
Sound secondary, they're keeping them, and here it is. They have a goose egg on the, on the, on the field, so yep. they're doing a really great job. Can't beat that. And the third key, limit the big plays and the penalties. Yes, limit the big plays. We, we're having a little trouble with it. Yeah, yeah you can say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're doing a better job, and here it is. Can we do a better job in the second half? That's a good way. i say we're about two and a half on the three keys. That's it. And we'll see if we can get to all three <laughs> keys here in the second half. You've been watching the Raising Canes Halftime Show. We want to thank again all the Catholic High corporate partners, walk Owens Bistro, Mid-South Bank, Slocal, Baton Rouge Coca-Cola, Marucci, Moro Physical Therapy, Lamar, Shoppers Value, and Walters Papillon, Thomas Cullens, Attorneys at Law. Bears lead 31 to nothing. We'll be right back with the second half on the Bruin Broadcast Network. This is Lisa Harvey, the principal of Catholic High School, inviting you to support the fund for Catholic High. With a strong legacy of participation from parents, alumni, and friends, and I am proud to say 100% of our faculty who have contributed, the fund for Catholic High School is essential to ensuring continued excellence for our students as they learn, grow, and discover their true potential for success in life. So give today to the Fund for Catholic High School by logging on to catholichigh.org and be a part of what's defining the difference at CHS. And go Bears! Hello, my name is Paul Ross from the class of 1987, and I'm the current Catholic High Men's Club president. Since 1930, the Catholic High Men's Club has provided service and funding to Catholic High. The Men's Club membership drive is now away and for just a year. $300, you too can become a part of Club sponsors, Rush, please support your And what? Five ESPN. One four. I'm a jack. Number five.
feel fine, thanks. Thank you very much. Steve, you got my stuff. And I want you to take Scotty to my next door neighbor and stay with him, huh? His mother will meet him there. Dad, what are you doing? What's going on? Scotty. And I want you to listen to what I'm saying. Don't go into the house, right? I'll meet you there later. Come on, I need this car. Gentlemen, the President of the United States and the General Secretary of the Soviet Union. Important news for people who have been injured by gadolinium contrast dye injected during MRI or MRA scans. Studies show some people who received contrast dye by injection or IV during MRIs were later diagnosed with gadolinium storage condition, GSC, or gadolinium. Catholic High leads 31 to nothing. We'll be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. Hey, Bear fans, the CHS Bookstore is geared up and ready for the 2018 football season. Arrive at the game in style this season. Come to the bookstore and check out all the latest apparel and fan gear and pack the stands in orange and black. Football tickets can be purchased right here for every game. Show your pride, Bears. Shop in the bookstore school days Monday through Friday from 7.30 until 3.30. Go Bears! Hello, Bear fans. This is Daryl Papillon of Walters Papillon Thomas & Cullens, a proud partner of the Catholic High Bears. Our lawyers have 100 years of experience handling serious injury, wrongful death, and complex commercial cases. We are the alumni, parents, and children representing more than a dozen current and former Catholic High School Bears or alumni of other schools of the Brothers of the Sacred Heart. Go Bears! Hi, I'm Tim Barfield, and this is my wife, Nan. We're the chair couple for the 2018-19 Fund for Catholic High School Parents' Appeal. And the Griffins have it third and five, 10.43 to go in the third quarter. They're at the 44-yard line. Terry Matthews, who was the intended receiver on the last play, was the one shaken up for the Griffins. So that's one of their top running backs and receivers that is currently out of the ballgame. Trey Monroe has it at shotgun, fakes the zone read, and he looks down the field to throw it down the middle of the field and through the hands of number nine, Grant Arnett, who had enough yards for the first down. 
and it'll be incomplete and forced down for the Griffins, and they'll be forced to punt again. Jalen Monroe is putting that ball where he needs to be, but he, they're just not connecting. He, you know, he, he, he's doing a good job of throwing it. He has five touchdowns this year, 600 to He's doesn't doing it good. He's on the leaderboard. He's, he's about eight, but he's just not connecting. He's had a lot of those that went through his hands. So once again, Devin Cheer, who just got the 16-yard run for the first down, the punter, he'll be at the 41-yard line. And we have a new returner for the Bears. This will be Jonathan Medier. He'll be at the 9-yard line. So the kick's a low, and it'll bounce at the 15. It will take a Griffin bounce, and it'll stop all the way at the 4-yard line. So at 10.26 to go in the third quarter, it's Bears 31, Griffins nothing. Hey, folks, a little admissions update future bear families chs is currently accepting applications for the 2019 2020 school year all applications for admission next year are due on november 16th you can find the application information on the admissions process at catholichigh.org so the bears will have it deep in their territory at the four yard line 10 15 to go in the third quarter Jackson Thomas will come out at quarterback. Jake Outlaw will be the running back. Bears will have two receivers to the near side in a tight formation. Jackson Thomas will go under center, going for the hard count, trying to get the D-line to jump, and they don't. He'll hand it off to Jake Outlaw, left side. He's met at the line of scrimmage and stopped for a gain of none. So it'll be second and ten from the four-yard line. Yeah, nothing much in that line of scrimmage, but just get back to the line of scrimmage and give us something. Uh, Jake Outlaw has, he's averaging a lot of yards this year. He's averaging about nine, nine or ten yards a carry from that great game, that one carry for six to seven yards in a touchdown last week. And great stuff on him, too, by the way you told me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were messing with him about that. <laughs> so Thomas will come in. Braylon Morgan will come in at running back. Two receivers to the near side. He'll be at shotgun. Jake Outlaw and Braylon Morgan will be in the backfield. And Charles Barhorse will be the H-back to the right. Jackson Thomas is standing now in the bear end zone. They're coming out of the horseshoe here at Memorial Stadium. There's a snap. Zone read right side. Going to give it to Jake Outlaw, and he gets a room to the 15, all the way out to the 17-yard line, and he picks up a first down Catholic high. Good job by Jake Outlaw, man. I, I can't say that much about this kid. He's doing a good job as long as running 67 yards. He has 35 carries, 346 yards. Man, he's third on the team in rushing. He does a great job, man. A pickup of 13 right there for Outlaw and gets the Bears a little bit of breathing room now that the ball be placed at the 17-yard line. 9.07 to go, third quarter. Bears lead 31 to nothing over the Griffins. Once again, Jackson Thomas is in shotgun. Braylon Morgan and Outlaw in the backfield next to him. Braylon Morgan goes in motion, hands it Ooh. off to Outlaw, who's met behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of three on the play, and that was number three for the Spears. Griffins. Reggie Spears again making the tackle. <laughs> Reggie Spears, man, we've been calling that guy a name a lot tonight, but he is the probably the heart and soul of that defense, man. He, he's everywhere, and he moves around, and, hey, he comes to play. Remember they had another guy named Landon Collins. Remember him? <laughs> He's kind of heard, but he went somewhere for college. <laughs> I quit paying attention, so it's all right. Second and 13, 825 to go third quarter. Jackson Thomas at shotgun, two receivers to the near side. One to the far side. Josh Parker is the running back next to him. They'll do the Ooh, nice. stretch play to Grisaffi near sideline. He crosses the 20, but met by a defender. He'll pick up seven on the play, so it'll be third and six for the Bears at the 22-yard line. Good job by Mike Giuseppe, man. Good job because he's hey, he's got about four games experience. He's getting in there and making some good plays. And, hey, this is what it's for. You get a, get a lead and let those young guys get their legs underneath them because you never know who's going to help you in the playoffs. So they got out to the 22-yard line. So I think this is going to be more of a third and seven here seven. for the Bears. 7.45 to go third quarter. Bears lead 31 to nothing. Jackson Thomas at quarterback. Josh Parker's the running back. He's got three receivers to the far side. That's his left one receiver. To the near side, his right. Shotgun snap gets it, drops back, looking for a man down the field. Has Forrest Roy past the sticks at the 33-yard line, and that's a first down, Catholic High. Good job by Forrest Roy, man. He's really, really catching those little – he's kind of what we call our possession receiver. He catches those balls in the possession. He catches away from his body, and he brings it in, and that's what I love to see, them receivers that catch the ball with their hands. Yeah, that was a little past the sticks right there, more of just a 10-yard a, a route, 10-yard yes. sticks right yes. there. So great yes. pickup for the Bears. They started this possession on the four-yard line, and now we're out to the 31-yard line. First and 10, 7-12 to go, third quarter. They're going left to right here on Dizzy's Toyota Tundra Dial. 
Handoff, Braylon Morgan. He's going to come near sideline, 35, tries to cut it back at the 40, and he's taken down at the 42-yard line, and it's going to be close to a first down, and they're going to give it to him. Braylon Morgan, first down, Catholic High. Yeah, Braylon Morgan's coming to the game. He has about four touchdowns. He's averaging probably about, well, he right at about eight or nine yards of carry. So good job by Braylon, man. Get it, get your, get your yards, Braylon. That's the time. So he picks up the first down all the way out to the 43-yard line. 6.45 to go third quarter. Bears lead 31 to nothing, and they're putting together a nice drive right here. It started on the four-yard line. Jackson Thomas at quarterback, two receivers to each side, double twins. Shotgun snap, fake pumps. Now he looks left to throw the screen pass to Braylon Morgan, looking for a blocker in front of him. He's got some big old line out in front of him. Brian Hill with the leading block. He gets out to the 40, still on his feet. And big bear lineman coming from behind to get a few more yards. A pickup of 18 on the play for Braylon Morgan. Another first down Catholic high. And just because of those screens, I will tell you this, though. Here's the one. He has four touchdowns and probably from those screens. Good job by Braylon. Yeah, Braylon Morgan coming into the ballgame had 10 touchdowns equal to Josh Parker. Several of his, though, have come on pass plays. Yes. And, of course, those special team punt returns that he's had yes. earlier in the season. So yep. Bears cross the 50. They are now in the Griffin territory. 6.08 to go third quarter. They lead 31 to nothing. Jackson Thomas, quarterback at shotgun. Two receivers to the near side, his right. Wait on the shotgun snap from Brian Hibbert. There's the snap, a little high snap. He's able to get it off to Braylon Morgan on the dive. He cuts away from a man, crosses the 30-25, and down to the 23-yard line right there. And a late hit right there coming in on the Griffins as Hunter Chauncey came in looking for an extra block and then was hit again by Griffin. You don't want to see that now. Bears up 31-0, third quarter. Maintain composure. Maintain your composure, and the coaches look for that. Anybody who you risk, risk anything later in the game, you're probably not going to play for Coach Petita. You need to control yourself and control your control your emotions. So we'll see what the penalty is right here. It did it did come in late after the Griffin player did hit Hunter Chauncey. We'll see if they call it on both or just on one. So personal foul, yep. One will go against number 72, Hunter Chauncey, and one will go against number 40, Jamel Jala. And that will offset, so the Bears will maintain their first down. So it looks like Coach Gabe Fertitta will take a timeout. So we'll take a timeout on the field and a timeout in the booth. 5.47 to go, third quarter. Bears lead 31 to nothing. We'll be right back. Bruin Broadcast Network. At Moro Physical Therapy, we understand the importance of keeping you in the game, in athletics, and in life. That is why we offer convenient appointment times and excellent therapists in all 10 of our locations in and around the greater Baton Rouge area. As a proud corporate partner of Catholic High School, we're excited to be a part of the Bears' success throughout the years and into the years to come. For more information on the services offered, visit www.moropt.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Moro Physical Therapy. Lamar Advertising is a proud corporate partner of Catholic High School. Since 1902, Lamar has been on a mission to partner and grow with local businesses by providing an unmatched out-of-home advertising service to all our clients. A Lamar sign is the most effective way for your business to get your message to the community. Check us out online at Lamar.com or give us a call at 225-752-0200. Lamar.com or give us a call 225-752-0200. At Lamar, we are outdoor. Yeah. So welcome back, folks, to Catholic High Football here on 104.5 ESPN, BruinBroadcast.com, and WBTR Channel 19, 144 Ascension. So they look like they did call offsetting penalties, but now they've pushed the Bears back all the way to the 37-yard line. Really interesting now to see. So the Bears will have it first and 25 at the 37 with 5.47 to go. That's one of those plays that we're not quite sure in the booth what happened. Yes. A, a phantom, one of those phantom plays, because I've never really seen that before, and I played a lot of football. Offsetting penalties, I didn't know they <laughs> they pushed you back on offsetting. I thought they just offset and you played it down again. So now they're also going to move the down markers. So instead of it being first and 25. Right. I've never seen this. So here's here's what I think. My one year in the Baton Rouge Officials Association. Okay, here you go. I think we got the first down. The play was over. Then it was after the after the play, job, so they're going to say that the play maybe against the Griffins was a, a flag that wasn't meant to be. They're going to push the Bears back. Right. Coach Mastretta is even on the field trying to figure, figure it, out it out right now. 
And we might even have one of our executive producers go talk to the official that's running the clock right now. <laughs> hey, we could figure something out. I don't know. Just an idea. So, I don't know. 5.47 to go, third quarter. Hey, it doesn't matter. We're on a football field. It's Friday night. The weather's beautiful. We're at the Concrete Coliseum off of Fuqua Street Memorial Stadium. Got to love it. Here with the great one, the original Mr. Football Friday night, Kevin Franklin, bringing you some Catholic Kai football. So, hey, we're going to have it here. First and 10, 37-yard line. Bears are still heading towards the interstate. Jackson Thomas, quarterback, two receivers to his right, the near side. Gets the shotgun snap. He hands it off to Jake Outlaw, just going to go on the dive play up the middle, the read, and he's able to pick up five yards. So it'll be second and five from the 33-yard line. Yeah, off tackle, read, play off tackle. He gave him the ball. Hey, just give us a good job. We have a guy down. Another man down on the field. So we'll take another Moro physical therapy timeout. 5.33 to go in the third quarter. Bears lead 31 to nothing on the Bruin Broadcast Network. Welcome to Walk-On's Bistro and Bar, where every dish starts from scratch. Fresh ingredients bring our food to life. Mouth-watering cuisine, unique flavors, and we're always more than happy to share our southern charm and culture. A love of life, family, food, friends, fun, and celebrations. Walk-Ons, it's game day with a taste of Louisiana. Doe's Eat Place in Mid-City Baton Rouge is your family-friendly neighborhood steakhouse right around the corner from Catholic High. Just like the Bears, Doe's is all in on their commitment to a winning team. They hand-cut their steaks daily with beef loins that are aged at least 21 days. So head to Doe's before or after the game and help them keep the winning tradition. Doe's Eat Place, located at 3723 Government Street, or call 387-5331 or visit doesbatonrouge.com. Welcome back, Bear fans. Catholic High football, number 99, Hayden Willis shaking up on the play. 5.33 to go, third quarter. Bears lead 31 to nothing. Thank you to executive producer Aaron Hart for finding out what happened after the offsetting penalties. A personal foul on someone on the Catholic High sideline, and that's what pushed the Bears back. So we have it second and five from the 32, heading towards the interstate inside Griffin territory. Jackson Thomas fakes the read, throws it to the near sideline. Greg Martin trying to make a man miss. He gets up to the 26-yard line, a pickup of four on the play, and that'll be third and one for the Bears. Yeah, Greg and Martin having a, having a great year, 15 catches for 157 yards. He's averaging about 10 yards a catch. He has two touchdowns this year, so he's doing a good job, man. He really is. So they're going to say the ball got all the way to the 26-yard line, and we were able to pick up the first down. But once again, there's a penalty right there, a flag on the breast cancer symbol right there, on the little ribbon right there. So we'll see what happens. A most likely a personal foul or a late wow. hit, unsportsmanlike mm. conduct, something happening here. They're talking about it. So Bears did pick up the first down, most likely after the play. Bears do lead 31 to nothing, 5.17 to go, third quarter. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Bears. And that'll be the penalty. Okay, so an unsportsmanlike penalty against an offensive player for the Bears. After the Bears picked up the first down. So that'll push them back again. The penalty happened at the 26-yard line. So we should go all the way back to the 41, where it'll be first down again for the Bears. Woo, Professor I, Messenger, good luck on this, my man. Yeah, man, and he's oh. doing a great job, Woo. too, man. You guys don't know how status He's doing a great job. He's filling in for Mr. Butler, but this is a lot of going on, man. It really is. I've never seen all this going on. There's some crazy penalties. So we'll just kind of start it like it restarted right here. Let's yes. see. Okay, now the referee is going to run over to the sideline. He is way out of position. Hey, Ben, while we're here, let's talk a little bit about the admissions for the Bruin broadcast. We want to let all the Catholic high school open houses set for Thursday, November 8th, beginning at 4.30 p.m. Students in grades 5 through 8th and their families are invited to take a glimpse of life at CHS and see all that Catholic High has to offer. Please make sure to attend. No registration is necessary. Just show up Thursday, November 8th, 4.30 at Catholic High. Man, I used to love open house, Ken. I don't you. Know. Oh, man. Oh, Woo. man, what? Oh, man. So much fun. Oh, man, just being a host. I was a host one year. I was in school and i was i take the parents around yeah man you thought man i thought i was steve harvey somebody baby <laughs> I, I was talking laughing joking kissing babies oh man it was beautiful 
<laughs> Kevin Franklin shaking, shaking hands, kissing babies. Who would have thought? Jackson Thomas at shotgun. He hands off to Jake Outlaw on the dive play. He crosses the 35-30, breaks it to the far sideline, looking for another blocker, and he goes down to 26-yard line. He's able to pick up that first down Catholic high. Good job by Jake Outlaw. But just saw how many how many yards did he he how many tackles did he break? He broke so many tackles that he kept those feet moving. Man, he does a great job with that. He really do. So the Bear offensive player, the penalty was on, was number 72, Hunter Chauncey. So now in for the Bears at right tackle will be number 75, Sam Cole, getting into the ball game now. Good old Sam Cole getting a little experience with the first-timers, with the first team. And as I say that, of course, he, he runs gets off. taken out. But it's okay. <laughs> first and 10 for the Bears, 26-yard line, 435 to go in the third quarter. Jackson Thomas, he's at shotgun, three receivers to the near sideline, his right. Shotgun snap. He'll hand it off to Braylon Morgan, left side, breaks it away, 20, 15, all the way down to the 11-yard line. First down, Braylon Morgan. But, Dixon, I told you, we, we, we talked about this earlier. When they create, they create these holes, these great, great holes, and I love the way they do that. They just create space so those little guys can get in there, man. Good job. Great job by Braylon Morgan right there. He'll come out of the ball game. Outlaw will come back in. Jackson Thomas, the quarterback. Bears have it first and 10 from the 11-yard line. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far sideline. Jackson Thomas will be at shotgun. Looks like at this point he's going to try to let the play clock go down a little bit before snapping the football. Play clock gets below 10. Game clock's at four minutes. Wait on the snap from Brian Hibbert. There's the snap. He'll hand it off to Jake Outlaw up the middle. Crosses the 9-8. Now he cuts it to the left side. Jersey pull. He gets a push from the offensive lineman, and he is in. 11 yards for Outlaw. Touchdown, Catholic Kai. Hey, it ain't no fun if your homeboy can't. Yay, bro, that's a good job by the offensive lineman, man, to push him in the end zone. I wish they would have pushed me like that when I was younger, man, but that's all right. I was too fast for him, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't, <laughs> couldn't catch up to you, Flash and Dash. Come on now. Bears take the 37 to nothing lead with 3.42 to go in the third quarter. And Cole Kazanoff will come on to kick the extra point again for the Bears. Jackson Thomas will do the holding, and Elijah Reams will do the snap. Waiting on it here. He's kicking towards the interstate. The kick is up. It's definitely deep enough, and it's straight enough. It's good. 3.42 to go in the third quarter. Bears take a 38 to nothing lead right there. Hey, folks, we want to tell you a little bit about a glimpse at CHS Athletics. All Bear fans are encouraged to come out and support the swim team as they compete in the city championship at Crawfish Aquatics. Swimming starts at 1 p.m., and the Bears are going for their 29th consecutive city championship. The cross-country team will compete in the pre-state meet in Natchitoches, last weekend and finished with a perfect score of 15 in the varsity and jv races the bears compete in the metro championship this saturday at highland road park with the varsity race starting at 8 a.m and don't forget folks the wrestling and the basketball team start their seasons next week with competitive contests right out of the gate the basketball team scrimmages woodlawn high school on tuesday at 5 p.m and the wrestlers compete against ea at 6 p.m in the Spartan gym. Good luck to both squads as they begin their year. Go Bears! Wow, that's a lot going on at Catholic High. Hey, man, we keep a lot going on at Catholic because those young men need some activity. So good job by those young men. Hey, and guess what? Those young men actually are practicing at the YMCA, so I get to see them every year, and I get to, get to cheer them on. So good job, guys, and good luck. Good luck, and go Bears! The big orange wave, the, the cross-country team, you know, they got that nickname because that one year they won the state, and they all were leading. They got one through Wait. six. They said, oh, my God, it looks like a big orange wave coming down the hill. And it stuck with us. And it stuck with us all those state championships later. So Matthew Goodson kicks off from the 40, rolls into the end zone, and actually rolled out of the gate back there. So 342 to go in the third quarter. Catholic High, 38. Dutchtown, nothing. And they'll start on the 20. You know, for Coach Guy Mastretta right here, you just want to put a drive together, get some points on the board, and run your offense. Yes, we just, they, they just need to do something well. We, there was 13-play drive for 94 yards, nine first downs. How about that for a young guy controlling the offense, man? Nine first downs on that drive. So I love the fact that he can come and take over that offense for the hurt uh, Cameron Dartes. 
So once again, Dre Monroe, he's the quarterback for the Griffins. He'll come out at shotgun. They'll have three receivers to the left, one to the right, the left being the near sideline, and that is also the Dutchtown Griffins sideline. Shotgun snap. He'll hand it off to number seven, Jacoby Williams. He'll go right side. He'll pick up four. He's still on his feet, and he breaks away. He crosses midfield, 40-30. There is nobody in front of him, and he will take it 80 yards on the touchdown for the Griffins as they get on the board. Six points for the Griffins. Yeah, he just took the ball right up the middle. I think the Bears were kind of – Bears kind of going to sleep, and we, and they, they caught him sleeping, and then that's what happens. You have to make sure you, you cover yourself on that one. Good, that, good run, though. Good after run. I'm going to say that. After that touchdown, will pause for station identification? Nope. Okay. We'll right. wait. We'll wait on okay. the extra – point which will be number 35 for the Griffins they got two kickers 35 Cohen parent will do the extra point here the hold will be number 18 Trey Martin wait on the snap good snap hold kick is up good and she's good so with 320 to go in the third quarter Griffins get on the board but the Bears still lead 38 to 7 we'll be right back Bruin Broadcast Network At the Bone and Joint Clinic of Baton Rouge, we treat the athlete inside all of us. Whether it's an injury from a game-breaking play or a fall in the driveway, we're ready to treat all of your aches and breaks. With locations in Baton Rouge, Prairieville, and Walker, our 17 orthopedic specialists share a common goal to keep you moving. Orthopedic specialists are on hand Fridays from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. at our Prairieville location. Find us online at BJCBR.com. The Bone and Joint Clinic of Baton Rouge. Move more. Hurt less. 104.5 104.5 WNXX Jackson, 104.9 KNXX Donaldsonville, and WDGL HD2 Baton Rouge. Welcome back, folks. Catholic High football here, 104.5 ESPN, BruinBroadcast.com, and WBTR Channel 19 Baton Rouge. 144 Ascension, the Griffins get on the board with an 80-yard touchdown run by Jacoby Williams. Hey, Kevin, your third key, limit the big plays and penalties. No, not tonight. Not tonight. I don't know about <laughs> Not tonight. But that's something that they do need to work on, and I did see that as being a problem going into this week. But, hey, I watched a lot of film, and that's what that's what I saw. So that's what we need to work on. Kicking off for the Griffins, number 73, Christian Donnelly, and he'll kick a line drive that will just go out of bounds. So the Bears will take over phenomenal field position. Hey, Kev, i got to give a shout-out to my grandma, Ruthie Balestrine, and her friend Coco. Grandma Ruth, Listening in tonight. You got so. to say hey to Grandma Ruthie, baby. Thanks, y'all, for the, <laughs> for the support. You, know, you got to say give them love to Grandma Ruth. You know, they Ruth always say you need to find you. You know, you're about to get married, so, you know, yes. find you a December lady that, that thinks you're beautiful. Yes. Never thinks you have enough food. Yes. And gives you money when you leave. That's it. Find someone just like your grandma, Loves right? Mo- okay. Just like your grandma. Yep. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so the Bears will get the ball on the 35-yard line after Donnelly's kick goes out of bounds. 3.20 to go in the third quarter. And it looks like the Bears might be subbing in a couple new guys here. we got Jackson Thomas at quarterback. That's number 20, the running back. George Hart back there in the backfield. Two receivers to the far side. And they'll just hand it off to Hart on the dive play. Nice pickup of five yards on the play. And that'll be second and five from the 40. Yeah, Hart's coming in. He's coming in to kind of kind of give us some offset. He's a young guy, so they're trying to put him in the game to give him some experience. So other than putting us one of those other guys in, put let put the young guy in, the sophomore or the freshman in, and let him get some reps. Yeah, folks, see a lot of guys in there. Once again, Sam Cole, see number 66, Yusuf Atkins, mm-hmm. number 54, Zach Boulay is in there as well on the O line. And as we see, him, we're going to try to get him to you. It's 2:45 to go, third quarter. Bears lead 38 to seven. Over the Griffins, Jackson Thomas still at quarterback. He's at shotgun. Wait on the snap. That's now from Yusuf Atkins. And the Bears look like they jumped just a little bit early right there. So a false start penalty against the Bears. See if we can get another number down there. Looks like who we got. 76 Landry Kurth, I believe, as well as in there. Number 29 for the Bears. Michael Rusk is now the H back. 19, Sam Etheridge, Sam of the Hammer. Love all Sam Etheridge. 87, Noah Nash still in the game, and 84, Jalen Tostin, who caught the touchdown pass earlier. Now number 24, Grisafi will come into the ball game for the Bears. Jackson Thomas at shotgun. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Five-yard penalty pushes them back to second and nine at the 36-yard line. Thomas waiting on the snap. Grisafi goes in motion behind the line of scrimmage. He'll hand it off again 
to Hart. He'll move up the middle, get four yards on the play out to the 39-yard line. That's where we'll have it, third and six for the Bears. Yeah, Hart is one of those backs that he, he didn't get a lot of y- yards, a lot of carries yet, so I think they're trying to get him some carries before the season ends with the last, last couple of games we got because I don't see him on the, the stat sheet. So they're trying to get that young man some, some, um, some reps in. That'll be good. So the Bears, 7-1 and one on the season. Look like they have this one handled. Hey, we still got a quarter to go, so, you know, not over yet. 140 to go in the third quarter. Jackson Thomas at shotgun, three receivers to the far side. That's his left. Waiting on the shotgun snap. There it is. It's over his head. Over Jackson Thomas' head. He's able to pick it up, looking for a man down the field. He throws it through the hands of Jalen Tosin and almost intercepted by number one, Deldrick Jones. And that's a play right there that they will go over in the film room. And sometimes it's better just to fall on it than try to risk something. Right. And on the play, the man goes down. Right. But he's able to get up pretty quick right there. So it will be fourth down for the Bears, fourth and five. Ball will be on the 40-yard line. They will have to punt it now with 124 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, the ball just got out of the way, got away from him. But here, I remember Coach Warner saying this clearly. Hey, man, throw that ball to the guy in the third row over there. <laughs> Do not throw that where we can get it intercepted. Give us another opportunity, man. Do not throw that ball where we can get it intercepted. Yep, Coach Fertitta met young Jackson Thomas on the sideline right yes. there. I'm sure very similar words. I, I feel like Coach Weiner one time came on the sideline and just goes, what were you thinking, you know? I wasn't, Coach. <laughs> trying to make it rain out here, I'm Coach. To coach. All state, make it coach, rain. Coach, come man. I'm the, come on. So back to receive for the Griffin standing is 20. will be number five, Terry Matthews. Got a little injured earlier. Cole Kazanoff with the punt. High over end punt. He'll catch at the 21-yard line. Trying to make a man miss. Makes the first couple Bears miss. He gets up to the 29-yard line. Still on his feet and then taken down. A return of nine yards. And the Griffins will start next possession on the 30-yard line. 108 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, good coverage by the Bears. Hey, surround that guy. Make sure you bottle him up. And um, no no more big plays, man. No more big plays. And once again, the Bear defenders now look like they're also going to do some subs. We'll try to get you those numbers as well, folks. I see 52. DeMonte Rogers is in the game. Eight. Jalen Armwood, the starter. Still looks, so it looks like we still have the defensive back starters. We might start subbing a little bit of the D-line the linebackers here. We'll try to get those to you. Trey Monroe, quarterback for the Griffins. Once again, going for the hard count, trying to get the Bears to jump, and they do not. They stay on side. Great job, especially for DeMonte Rogers coming into the game, not seeing that yet. Great job for him. Yes. He'll have three receivers to his left, which is the near sideline. He's in the shotgun, drops back, throws the quick pass near side. Terry Matthews, he catches the 30, makes the Bear defender miss, and he gets out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Put a little basketball juke on him right there. Out to the 44-yard line, first down, Griffin. We call that the Euro step, the A.K.A. Say it with your chest, young man. Go meet him and do not go for the fake. You don't go for the fake, and that's what he got you on that one, brother. But you just made a highlight film for the wide receiver. That's okay. <laughs> still, still show him the scoreboard, which reads the Lamar scoreboard. Bears lead 38-7, to 7, 58 seconds to go, third quarter. Shotgun handoff to Jacoby Williams, who goes up the middle, gets eight yards on the carry. It'll be second and two for the Griffins, 45 seconds to go. Third quarter, he crosses midfield to the 48-yard line. Yeah, Griffins are trying to still play ball here, and the coaches want to see some things from these guys because he hasn't took taken the first guys out, so he want to see some stuff from them. 35 seconds to go, third quarter. Griffins have crossed midfield, 38-7, to Bears lead. Draymond Rowan's shotgun, three receivers to the near side. That's his left. Shotgun snap. He fakes the read option, throws it near sideline, and the defender was... Hold, you, I mean, I didn't know what to say because he's all over him right there. Yeah. He was down. I don't know what he's doing right there. He was down, but definitely a holding on the wide receiver out here Very much versus so. the Griffins. Yeah, it looked like he, he was grabbing on him, and it looked like he was trying to get away, and he got away from him. But that, that was, we saw that from up here, and we're right close to the sideline. We saw it from up here, so I know the refs saw it. Things, once again, look, getting a little choppy on the field right now. And interesting to see coming in for the Bears. Looks like number four. L.C. Benjamin, linebacker now for the Bears. L.C. had been a running back most of his career. Now we're seeing him doing a little bit of linebacking for the Bears. So there it is, holding against the Griffins. That'll push them back 10 yards, and they'll repeat the down. Fans on the sideline here, press box side, giving a little booze and some chance, but pretty obvious holding. Not as obvious as me never becoming a Grizzly great with you, Kevin. No, okay. you will. Shuts. Become one. 
it's some time, and you <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that lack of yeah, athletic ability together, up at some yes. point. But you years. know what, folks? The voice can talk, and he'll be here talking yes. all night. <laughs> As we got 18 seconds to go in the third quarter, Bears lead 38 to seven over the Griffins. Holding penalty pushes them back to a second and 12 at the 42-yard line, back on their side of the field. Shotgun once again for Dre Monroe. Puts a man in motion. That's Jacoby Williams. Lines up now to his right. Shotgun snap. Gives him the read option. He comes near sideline looking for a man to miss. He's taken down after pickup of two. Back to the original line of scrimmage at the 44-yard line. And that will end the third quarter. Through three quarters here at Memorial Stadium. It's Bears 38. Griffin 7. We'll be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. Shoppers Value, a proud corporate sponsor of Catholic High School, invites you to stop by one of our 18 locations in Louisiana and Mississippi to stock up on all your grocery needs. Our cost plus pricing offers you great value along with a quality selection of groceries, meat, and produce. Let us be your one-stop location. Shoppers Value, locally owned and operated, a proud family legacy of three Catholic High graduates and a proud supporter of Catholic High School. Bolton's Health Mart Drugstore is a proud sponsor of this year's Catholic High Grizzly Bears football team. Bolton's, like Catholic High, is a part of Baton Rouge's history and has long been one of our city's neighborhood pharmacies. The next time you need a unique gift idea or for any medical prescription need, think of Bolton's Health Mart Pharmacy, 2958 Perkins Road. For delivery in South Baton Rouge area, call us, 343-4869, 343-4869. Bolton's Health Mart, peace of mind today and into next century. And hello, Bear Nation. It is now the fourth quarter live for Catholic High Football, 104.5 ESPN, BruinBroadcast.com, WBTR Channel 19, Baton Rouge 144 Ascension. Dixon Walsh making voice of the Bears, joined by the Grizzly Great, the original Mr. Football, Friday night, Kevin Franklin. Bears lead 38-7, fourth quarter. Dutchtown is now heading towards the interstate here at Memorial Stadium, and that's the way they'll go the rest of the night. They have a long third and 10 from the 44-yard line. Drew Monroe, quarterback, has trips to the near side. That's a tight formation triangle. Shotgun snap. He'll keep the zone read this time, and he's met by the Bear defenders behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of three. Fourth and 13. We'll get a turnover on down for the Bears. Yeah, good play by the Bears. Hey, that's the way to sniff that thing out. Christian Menino was on it, and which he was on it. He is one of those defensive linemen that has been there for us all this year. But him never sniffed that thing out was good. It was very good for that defensive line. 85 in there as well for the Bears. That's Reed Babin, the senior defensive lineman, able to fall on that one. So great job by the Bears. So now a little confusion here. You know, you got some backups in the game, a punt return. You know, some guys look not here, yes. not quite sure what to do. So still the punt for the Griffins, Devin Tier, 81. He's standing at the 28-yard line. Grisafi will be the returner for the Bears at the 23-yard line. A low wobbling kick heads towards the sideline. It bounces out of bounds at the 30-yard line. So 11:04 to go in the ball game. Bears lead 38 to seven. We'll be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. Hey, Bear fans, the CHS Bookstore is geared up and ready for the 2018 football season. Arrive at the game in style this season. Come to the bookstore and check out all the latest apparel and fan gear and pack the stands in orange and black. Football tickets can be purchased right here for every game. Show your pride, Bears. Shop in the bookstore school days Monday through Friday from 7.30 until 3.30. Go Bears! Welcome back, Catholic High Football. Fourth quarter, 11.04 to go in the ballgame. New quarterback in for the Bears. That's Ainsworth on the QB keeper. He's going around the right side. Excuse me, that's number 13, Landon O'Connor. I thought that was Ainsworth. Landon O'Connor, 13, comes into the ballgame, and he picks up over 20 yards. First down, Catholic High. How's that for a sophomore, 5'11", 160? Hey, been doing a great job at the JV probably, and now he's coming playing in his varsity game. Hey, man, we're doing a great job if these young guys can, can play ball for us. So O'Connor crosses midfield. Number 12, Jackson Guess, is in the backfield at running back next to him. Bears cross midfield. This time they're going to let the play clock go down all the way. First and 10 from the 43-yard line. Great job by O'Connor. He's got three receivers to the near side, one to the far sideline. Waiting on the snap. There it is. He's going to hand it off. Jackson Guest, right side on the dive. 
He's able to pick up. He's still on his feet, still going. Look at the young man go. Picks up nine on the play. Great job, Jackson Guess. Yes, I see you working, baby. I used to tell my running backs all the time, especially those young guys, man. I see you working, baby. Keep get, keep getting there, drive your feet because you are just a sophomore. You got a lot of years ahead of you. Keep going, young man. Good to have those young Bear fans out there listening right now. My Neisters, Abs, and Rylan. Great to have the young ladies out there listening too. One day you could maybe be the Catholic High homecoming queen like Miss Cangelosi was earlier. Congratulations. Tonight. Congratulations. 10 14 <laughs> to go in the ball game. Landon O'Connor still in. Three receivers to the near side. They're heading towards the horseshoe here at Brex Memorial Stadium. Trey Benson goes in motion behind the line of scrimmage. We'll hand it off to number 20. That's hard. No, we're going to keep it near side. We're going to pitch it to Trey Benson. Trying to make a man miss, but he will go down. A loss of one on the play. And it'll be third and three for the Bears. Yeah, yeah, he didn't look comfortable doing that. He didn't look comfortable doing that option. I think Ainsworth is more of a passer, uh, passer guy, rollout guy. That option is just something that he's going to have to work on these next two years or so. Yeah, especially when you're in, in an offense, you know, yes. seeing another team in a varsity <laughs> game. No matter, yeah. no matter how yeah. many times we ran triple option right, triple option left, when you get out there against the opponent, totally different. Totally different. <laughs> yep. Totally different. 925 to go in the ball game. Bears lead 38 to 7. They're heading into the horseshoe in Griffin territory at the 36 yard line. Shotgun snap. Once again, O'Connor, he's just gonna run for it, trying to make a man miss, trying to break it to the outside. Should have stayed middle of the field. He's gonna lose two. It'll be fourth and five for the Bears. Yeah, if you can see my hand movements in the in the booth, I said cut it back, cut it back cut it back <laughs> he has to know that he has the cutback lanes and he can make those plays with his feet so he'll learn that too that's something that he'll pick up later but hey hey that's why he's in he's in to learn and that's why coach Fatita and his staff have him in so the bears will have to punt it away the ball's at the 38 yard line pooch punter comes in matthew goodson he's gonna be standing back at his 49 yard line to return for the griffins number five that's terry matthews standing back at the five yard line here Elijah Reams again with the snap. Great snap. Pooch punt super high into the air right here. Nice. Terry Matthews is going to wave it off, and it will take a Catholic high bounce, and they will down it at the seven-yard line. Great job by Matthew Goodson and the Bear punt team. 8.24 to go in the ball game. Bears lead 38-7. to We'll be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. Welcome to Slocal. Slocal is an educational initiative that allows you to give back to a school while supporting local businesses. Sign up in three easy steps, and 25% of your subscription will go back to a school of your choice, all while you enjoy savings and offers from your favorite local businesses. It's as simple as finding a business, opening the page, and redeeming the offer. Go to www.getslocalapp.com to find out more today. Welcome back, folks. Catholic High football, fourth quarter, 824 to go. Bears lead 38-7. to The Griffins are pinned back. Shotgun snap, shuffle pass to number five, Terry Matthews, and he slips on the play right at the line of scrimmage, a gain of none. It'll be second and ten for the Griffins. Yeah, what I want to see the, the defense put, a, to put together something. Don't get into a long drive with them. Stop them right here and give the ball back to the offense to do some things with it so we can let the defense do uh, get off the field. Number 25, Hunter Thompson. Hunter Thomas is now in the game. 41 for the Bears. Alex Frugge, linebacker. Number 90, Zach Bergeron. Once again, Elsie Benjamin out there. Number four, I like seeing that. 13. Yes. That is not Landon O'Connor. That is Brock Boudreaux, his counterpart. Shotgun snap again for Dre Monroe. This time he's just going to keep it on the QB keeper. He goes on the right side, almost fumbles the football and pushed out of bounds at the 17-yard lines. Will be close to a first down. Most likely he got it right there for the Griffins. Yeah, Benjamin, he is playing. I remember back in the day we did actually play defense. We did both ways back at Catholic High. But Benjamin that time, he went too far with riding that play inside. He should have kind of stayed home and stayed uh, play side. But, hey, good play by him and him to playing, uh, playing that, that linebacker position. That says a lot about him as far as a team player. Number 12, Jay Arsamont in the game as well. 53, John Landry in there as well. I think I've gotten everybody, Kev. You see another number? Um, so let's give him a shout out. So I think we got everybody gotcha. there. So they gave him the first down, first and ten from the 18 yard line. Dre Monroe, shotgun quarterback, 7:27 to go in the ball game. He'll throw the quick pass over the middle, and the ball was batted down right there. Intended for number nine, Grant Arnett. Really, they didn't know where the ball was right there. Several guys looking around thought he caught it, thought a bear intercepted it, but it will be incomplete pass. 
Second and ten. And by L.C. Benjamin, good job getting your hand in there. But, hey, we, we didn't know where the ball was. I thought we were going to get an interception on it, actually. Number three, Evan Venable in the ball game. Griffin's doing a little substitutions here. 7-16 to go in the ball game. Bears lead 38-7 here from Memorial Stadium. Griffins are coming out of the horseshoe, heading towards the interstate. Don't forget, folks, stick around. After our broadcast, the band showcase will be going on on the field. We're going to broadcast it live. Handoff in the backfield. That's seven. Jacoby Williams again. Able to make a man miss. Eight yards out to the 27-yard line. Third and two for the Griffins. Yeah, Jacoby Williams is one of those players that if they would have put all this stuff together and nobody would have got hurt this year, I think the Griffins would have been a great, great team. But, hey, they have time, and they will make up some ground next year. Uh, but I don't think they plan for next year. But, hey, they, they did some great things this year. They, they came back from being a lot of those injuries. So that says a lot about God Mastretta and his team. Yeah, and had a you know, pretty impressive pre-district schedule. Walker 5A, Central 5A, Covington 5A. You know, nothing easy about that. Yes. Just, you know, when you get hurt, you have some injuries. Tough to come back. So 6.36 to go in the ball game. Trey Monroe now will go under center here in the pro formation. He'll fake the handoff. And there's a fumble on the play, and the Bears are going to recover it. And that's number 52, DeMonte Rogers with the fumble recovery. And the Bears will take over inside the Griffin 30. Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Go ahead, Big Daddy. I see you, man. He's been coming in, playing that second team defensive line position. And it's about time you make a play. Good job, man. Yeah, DeMonte Rogers, a senior defensive lineman. Really a nice-sized guy. But, you know, when the guys in front of you are named Reens, Fanukin, and Menino. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't know who... I don't, yeah. know who, I don't know who your backup running back was. Brother. He was probably like, man, my guy's in front of me. Danny Kevin Fawley. <laughs> Danny Fawley was a great running back, and he probably could have started a lot of teams, but he's behind Kevin Franklin and Warwick Dunn. Probably went on to become a, a NASA engineer somewhere or yes. something. He had so. a 4.0 grade point average. He was very smart, very intelligent. So Doesn't surprise me. Danny Fawley, man, I love you, man. Love Landon O'Connor still in at quarterback. This time he hands off to number 22, Connor Stewart. Play clock started there at 6.20. Bears lead 38-7. to They're driving into the horseshoe here. This is that time in the ball game. Coach Fertitta says, let the, let the play clock go down below 10 before you snap it. We're probably going to hand it off. Maintain ball security. Now a little, little confusion on the Griffin sideline. A player is coming off. Probably some, an equipment malfunction or just a little hit right there. We're not sure. But coming off will be... Number 20, Brett Latalus coming off the field. Bears have it second and four, 23-yard line. Landon O'Connor, shotgun snap. Trey Benson comes in motion. We're going to hand it off up the middle. That's that was old. number 20, George Hart. Looks like he picked up two on the play. So it'll be third and three for the Bears. Yeah, we're going to run the ball out here. We're going to get some good running plays. we got another guy injured, too. Looks like he's kind of hobbling. Um, but we're going to try to run the ball and see what we can do with it. They're getting the play from the sideline. So... We are definitely going to be on the Jersey Selection Committee next year. George Hart, 20. <laughs> Connor Stewart, 22. Identical. Yes. Thank you, Coach Fertitta. Hey, it. not identical. Number 12, Jackson Guest in the ball game. Landon Connor, shotgun. They're going to hand it off again on the die play, and Gas will go right, and he's able to pick up the first down Catholic high inside the Baton Rouge Coca-Cola red zone to the 17-yard line. I call that a vision quest, man. You haven't heard of the movie called Vision Quest? Vision Quest, that's where you use your vision and pull that ball all the way back to the play side to get that first down for us. Great job right there by number 12. Jackson Guest, the sophomore running back, 4.45 to go in the ballgame. Bears lead 38-7. to Final drive here for the Bears, most likely just trying to waste as much clock as possible. Play clock down to five. Once again, Landon Connor snaps his hands, waiting on the snap from Yusuf Atkins. Good snap, and he's just going to run it right. Lead blocker front him will be George Hart, crosses the 10 and taken down at the six-yard line. A pickup of 12 on the play for Landon O'Connor. First down, Bears. And goal to go at the five. Hey, Landon O'Connor can use his feet. I tell you that. He probably can't do that option yet, but he sure can run it and keep it. Um, that's a good job by that line pulling and leading this uh, we student body on uh, student body right and just lead that quarterback around and just get as much yards as you can. At 75, Sam Cole, 54, Zach Boulay, Yusuf Atkins, Landry Kurth, and Cohen Allen. O-line in there for the Bears. O'Connor's at quarterback. Balls at the five-yard line. He's going to keep it right side, and he will score. Landon O'Connor, touchdown for the Bears. 
and they go up 44 to 7 on the Griffins. Rumble, young man. I see you, young man. I see you working. He faked me out with that fake. Hey, for him to have that much that fake and fake us out, and I thought the running back had the ball. That's a good job by Connor, man. A good job, and he got him a touchdown, a varsity touchdown. Hey, man, you got to get your varsity letter, bro. <laughs> Landon O'Connor, sophomore quarterback with the run right there. Great job for him. Now on to hold, though, will be Addison Ainsworth, the other backup quarterback. Extra point kicking this time, number 95, Logan LeBlanc. Snap was good. Hold was good. Kick good. is good. With 3.51 to go in the ballgame, Catholic Kai. 45, touchdown Griffins, nothing. We will be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. After decades of duplicating, we're going digital, providing our customers with the latest technology and exceptional customer service. Before, you know, years ago, we just simply used um, a copy machine to copy, but now we're able to copy and print and scan and email, and that just and with one machine, that makes everything easier. Not only do they sell the product and guarantee it, they back it up and they service that product. Call us now for all of your digital office products. BRDP, experience no one can copy. <laughs> Welcome back, Bear Nation, to Catholic High Football here, 104.5 ESPN, BruinBroadcast.com, WBTR 19, Baton Rouge, 144 in Ascension. Your Catholic High Bears, with 3.51 to go in the ball game, are leading 45-7 to here from Memorial Stadium in District 5, 5A matchup. Yeah, man, I got to well, look. This, here's a stat I pulled out. The first five games, we was 34 points and the opponents 29. The last three games, 44 points, the opponents 10. Only 10 points by the last three, three, three games, last opponents, brother. We've been we've been dominating the, this last, the second half of the season uh, in district. Brother, we've been dominating people on the defensive side. Yeah, one thing I talked about in the pregame, I really like versus McKinley. We only gave a six total game to them yes. at EA, only three. And now if this score holds, only seven. You know, last year on that drive to the Dome, we were playing all those great teams heading up to Evangel and bringing home all those victories. Yes. That defense was not allowing the opponents to score. Yes. You know, I remember that T-shirt we all grew up wearing, offense yes. wins games, defense wins championships. championships. Always, man. They told us that very back when we was playing with the South Baton Rouge Rams, South Baton Rouge uh, Jags. Hey, man, you got to have a sound defense. Yeah, growing up on the streets, St. Aloysius Lions for me. Whew. The tough St. Louis Lions. Huh? Brutal. <laughs> Goodson will kick off Shout from out. the 40, and it will be playable at the 5. Terry Matthews, number 5, takes it at the 1, trying to make a man miss, Good job. and he'll bring it all the way out to the 20-yard line, a return of 19, and once again, a late hit right there on the play. Things are getting a little choppy out there, but the Griffins will start their possession at the 20-yard line, 340 to go in the ballgame. They must cover. You must cover on the kickoff routine. But here it is. The kickoffs are first team. They don't do that sub and on no, brother. It's always they stay first team. So guys have to be conscious of that when you're going out there, man. And make sure you cover the kicks as well. The coaches are still watching film on you. So make sure you cover your kicks and don't let the ball bounce. Griffins, 340 to go in the ball game. First and 10 from the 20. Coming back out, Dre Monroe. He'll have running backs lined up to his left and right. Two receivers to the far side. That's his left. Ball be placed on the right hash near sideline. Running back switch in the backfield. Shotgun snap. He'll hand it off here. That's a new running back. Try to get number 40. That's number 26 for the Griffins right there. Allen Alley with the carry. Uh, seven yards on the play. It'll be second and three. Really appreciate Bennett and Claire Hightower. One to stick around and watch the Bears, but their dad unfortunately took them in the car. But they're still listening because they're true Bear fans. <laughs> Thank you, guys, for listening Appreciate in. You. Love you. <laughs> Second and two for the Griffins. 3-11 to go in the ballgame. Shotgun snap again. Handoff once again, number 26. That's Allie. And the Bear defender got his hands on his helmet, so they're going to say a face mask, so they'll get some more yards here after the play. Yeah, that, that's, that's just unfortunate. At this time of the game, we need you to keep stay sound, but, hey, the Griffins need to learn the same lessons we do. Is <laughs> You need to kind of keep your wits about you. Stay playing sound football all the way through all four quarters. 2.59 to go in the ball game. Bears lead 45-7. to seven, Trying to prevent them from putting more than 10 points on the board right here. And that penalty will push the Griffins all the way out to the 48-yard line, two yards away from crossing midfield. Yeah. You don't want to get them get yards by actually getting penalties. You want to get yards by actually earning them. So that's what I see with the Bears need to stop them. Make them earn it here. 
Dre Monroe once again in shotgun. He's going to hand it off, coming near side. That's Allen Alley. He'll be pushed out of bounds, crosses midfield, out to the 45-yard line. Generous spot right there. Pickup of seven. It'll be second and three from the 45. Yeah, the Bears and the coaching staff want to see a stop right here. They want to see what you made up with two minutes left. They want to see if you can stop these guys and stop their momentum. It's really just young guys against young guys here. So we know that the old, the, your older guys have really kind of stepped out, except the quarterback. I think he still got the quarterback command. So number 22, Connor Stewart, plays a little running back. We'll also see him now at a defensive back position. Ooh, a high snap. He's going to fumble the football. Just has to fall on it. Dre Monroe in the backfield. He'll lose three on the play. So it'll be third and seven from the 48-yard line. Yeah, this is the snap. The snap has been kind of off this all day by, by, the, by the Griffins. Cole Wieldman, number 42, into the ball game. Trying to see who these other guys are. Looks like number 23, Shannon Elair maybe playing a little defensive back. Griffins, though, have it third and seven from the 49-yard line. They're heading towards the interstate, 2.07 to go in the ballgame. There's a good snap. He's going to hand it off again. 26, Allen Alley crosses the 45. That's where he'll stop forward progression right there. Picks up four on the play, but it's going to be third and three, fourth and three for the Griffins. At this point, Kevin, minute 49 to go in the ball game. Might just try to run it one more time, pick up the first down. Yeah, they're trying to try to make sure. Well, here it is. We have to stop them at this point. We, we're about 50-50 on stopping people on, four, on um, fourth down. So this, just bow up right now. Just bow up and make it. Chance for the Black Hat defense to stop them. Try to get the men to jump off sides. Great job by the D-line not to jump right there. 130 to go in the ball game. Fourth and three, 45-yard line for the Griffins. There's the snap. He's going to hand it off near sideline, and he's able to get the first down, crosses the 40 and out of bounds of the 36-yard line. Once again was Allen Alley for the Griffins. Yeah, we just couldn't stop him. They turned that corner on us. They pinned that guy, that, that end, and pinned that end down, and once they turned the corner, there's nobody there. The defensive back has to come up and make a tackle on that one. In for the Bears, defensive back number 15, Easton Fusile into the ball game. Just had a Bear defender run in the linebacker. We'll try to get you his number as well. But Dre Monroe and the Griffins have the football at the 36-yard line, 117 to go in the ballgame. Shotgun snap. Fumble. Yeah, he fumbled the ball on that play, and um, it's it just unfortunate. He just wasn't ready. It seemed like he wasn't ready for it. He um, he just fumbled the ball on that play. So, so yeah, we, we'll try to make a play next next one, this one. But, hey, the Griffins are doing a good job. They just they just kind of shooting themselves in the foot. Whew. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I had to sneeze. I don't like. What do you do? I need to ask Chris Blair. Like, what do you do? You got to <laughs> sneeze. I tried to call it. <laughs> For those listening, if you, if you heard that noise, a fumble on that one. Hey. Fumble. <laughs> God, my goodness. Shotgun snap. Once again, he'll hand it off to Allen Alley. Coming near sideline. Picks up three on the play. It'll move to third and 15 for the Griffins. 30 seconds to go. Depending on when they start the football, this could be the last play of the game. We'll see. And there it is. 24 seconds to go. They don't have to run another play if they don't want to, but we'll see what the coaches do here. 16 seconds to go in the ball game. Looks like they will run one more play. Third and 16 from the 42-yard line. 10 seconds to go now. Waiting on the snap. There it is. High snap. He'll hand it off again. Allen Alley going to the far side. He made, oh, Marucci, big hit. Easton Fusile coming in and not letting the game get over without putting up a Marucci big hit for Easton, baby. Love it right there. And that is the ball game. Good job. The Catholic Kai Bears beat the Dutchtown Griffins 45-7 to here from Memorial Stadium. We might have Coach Gabe Fertitta for an after-game interview. Not tonight, though. So your Catholic Kai Bears take down the Griffins 45-7, to and we'll be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. Catholic Kai football tradition. The- Fourier Insurance Agency knows about traditions as the Fourier Insurance Agency has been serving the insurance needs of Baton Rouge since 1946. The Fourier Agency can use the experience to give you the right amount of insurance tailored to your specific needs. For your home, auto, boat, or for your commercial insurance requirements, including general liability, property, and workers' compensation. The Fourier Insurance Agency uses the most respected and stable companies in the world to protect your future and your tradition. And go Bears! 
Postgame statistics brought to you by Hannes T. Bourgeois, CPAs and business advisors. Good teamwork is an asset both on the field and in the business world. The Hannes T. Bourgeois team has been working with businesses across Louisiana for more than 90 years. They offer a wide range of accounting, audit, assurance, and tax services, as well as litigation and advisory services to clients of all sizes. Not all CPA firms are the same. Experience the Hannes T. Bourgeois difference. Hello, Bear Nation, and welcome back to Catholic High Football as your Bears defeat the Dutchtown Griffins 45-7 to here live from Memorial Stadium. The Bears now move to 8-1 and on the season, 4-0 and in district play. Kevin, a great victory for the Bears tonight. A dominant effort by the Bears. They really, really did well on, on the offensive side of the ball, especially with that running game. Uh, Josh Parker, 19 carries for 188 yards and three touchdowns. What can you say about the young man? Yeah, great job. We got to see a lot of young, fresh guys. Yes. And how about the performance of Jackson Thomas? Backup quarterback Cameron Dartes wow. gets hurt. When a sack happens, high ankle sprain, so we'll try to get an update of him yes. for next week. But Jackson Thomas coming into the ball game and executing the offense to perfection. Yes, driving us down, coming in, making plays. Uh, the passing that he did, I like that passing game, him throwing it to uh, Forrest Roy. It, he just really looked good. For a backup, for a young backup, he really doing a great job. Let's recap some of those Kevin's keys to victory. You just mentioned it. First key was recharge the passing game. Yes, recharge the passing game, short game, in the flats, curls. I really like seeing it because that's something we're going to use. We cannot depend just on the, the running game in the playoffs. We got to be able to pass the ball. Got to be more than, got to be multi dimensional come yes. playoff time. Yes. Second key, sound secondary game. I can say it. They did a great job, but here it is. They, they limited him to, to passing the ball, and we got an interception. I think that's a good job. I think that's a win. I put a check for that one. So those were two keys that we would get checks for. Now the third <laughs> key, limit the big plays and penalties. Yes, and I think other than that long run, we did limit the big plays and also. Penalties, not so much. I must say that. Uh, so we was like one and a half, like you said, like a yeah. half. So that's not unfortunate for us, but we're going to get better. I think we've been getting better every, every week. So. so the Bears will still have to work on that. Next week we'll travel to Broadmoor yes. to take on the Buccaneers in the final regular season matchup of the season. Bears go in having a commanding lead in district play. We've yes. already assured ourselves now a tie of the district title. Yes. Things are looking good to be a 2 3 even potentially a one seed in the power rankings, depending how that John Curtis Rummel game goes tomorrow. So the Bears are in the position where they want to be, but, hey, nothing's handed to you in high school football in Louisiana. No, finish. And that's what we have to do. We have to finish and finish out Broadmoor strong. And uh, Broadmoor has have a hard time. They just have to – they limit it on, on, on players. But we, we just have to come out and play a good game. Again, let those young guys play. We need to start off quick. Start off quick and strong on offense against Broadmoor and just take it into the playoffs and just don't get hurt. Yeah. Nobody gets hurt. Yeah. And also, too, get head trainer Eddie Bright to make sure the guys got a little banged up tonight. Yes. Get them all fresh and healthy. Hey, don't forget, folks, you're watching us right now on the Shoppers Value postgame show, but stick around on the BruinBroadcast.com and WBTR. The Catholic High School marching band is going to perform for you the showcase piece yes. that they've been working on all yes. year that our halftime guest, Father Michael Alello, mentioned to him. Showcase in the band lingo, Super Bowl, baby. Yes. We want Catholic High <laughs> to bring home the championship in everything it is. Thank you to all the Catholic High corporate partners, Walk-Ons Bistro, Mid-South Bank, Slocal, Baton Rouge Coca-Cola, Marucci, Moro Physical Therapy, Raising Canes, Lamar, Shoppers Value, and Walters Papillon, Thomas Cullen's Attorneys at Law. Your Bears beat the Griffins 45-7, to and we'll be right back on the Bruin Broadcast Network. This is Lisa Harvey, the principal of Catholic High School, inviting you to support the fund for Catholic High. With a strong legacy of participation from parents, alumni, and friends, and I am proud to say 100% of our faculty who have contributed, the fund for Catholic High School is essential to ensuring continued excellence for our students as they learn, grow, and discover their true potential for success in life. So give today to the Fund for Catholic High School by logging on to catholichigh.org and be a part of what's defining the difference at CHS. And go Bears! This is Director of Advancement Jamie Seeger from the Class of 1990 for the Fund for Catholic High School. Since 1894, the Brothers of the Sacred Heart have relied on gifts providing financial support to keep CHS strong. Your gift to the fund is essential to student success and allows our students to discover their true potential for success in life. Every gift counts and you can make a difference with your generous support through the legacy of giving at CHS. Giving is easy. Go to catholichigh.org to make your gift today. Parents, alumni, friends, together for every student every year. And welcome back, folks, to Catholic High Football here 
1045 ESPN Bruin Broadcast.com. Hey, don't forget, folks, if you're listening to us on 1045 ESPN, stick around for the post game show. Cade Wasan, Coach Todd Black, Gordy Rush, and a cast of thousands will take you around the state recapping scores and highlights and even talk to victorious head coaches. So stay tuned right here to 104.5 ESPN and catch them live on CST. Hey, y'all usually don't get to see this wonderful lady that's next to me right now, but this is our executive producer, vice president, I don't know what you want to call it, but Miss Aaron Hart is now joining us as we're about to have the band showcase. Miss Hart, thanks for joining us. Oh, yeah, of course. You excited? I, I am. I love doing this on TV. <laughs> so we just kind of threw her in here, folks. But, hey, Miss Hart, tell the folks at home, normally on a game day, if you're not with us in the booth, you're also on the field as one of the cheerleader yes. moderators. Yes. So I am with the cheerleaders. So I get down there. We do the breakthrough. We get the student section really hyped with some of our stunts and our cheers get them really involved um we do some dances um that's one of the cheerleaders favorite things whenever the band plays um (laughs) they love their dances especially final countdown that is the big one the big one Mm -hmm. the final countdown Mm -hmm. and we're about to have a countdown to the band showcase is we're going to get out there on this field you're going to see just all this stuff that they have going on right now and i tell you what uh interviewing coach fertita each week and being so close to him if the cheerleaders don't put up its game day banner, I mean, he feels, he literally feels off. Oh, off. it's a problem. Yeah. I've even had some of his guys, I think that has spread to them as well. I have football players come up to me if it's not up early enough. Miss Hart, where's the banner? Where is it? And I think it definitely, um, it's kind of like a little bit of superstition um, that we keep the same banner up. Every week is the same one that goes up. It will go up as long as we are in this season. And so it brings a little good uh, juju. Yeah, same banner and I think same location too, oh, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you thought baseball players were superstitious. Coach Gay Fertitta, <laughs> I mean, he's got them all right here. So the band's setting up right now. You know, y'all talk the cheerleaders, they practice just as much as the oh, football sure. team. Tell yeah. the folks at home, it's not just showing up on a game day for the it cheerleaders. Is. No, we are three times a week um, for the girls, two times for the guys. So Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, we are stunting, we're cheering, we're dancing, especially when we have a pep rally or performance coming up. Those girls work incredibly hard um, doing routines again and again and again just to make sure that we get it right and really just working on our strength whenever we're stunting, um, getting those girls up high in the air. Y'all should have seen the basket at the St. Joseph's Pep Rally. (laughs) Y'all, I swear, 20 feet. So tell the folks at home, I mean, I know what that means, but what does that mean for the folks at home? Tell them what what the basket is. So essentially the boys, they um, put their hands together, and we had – Ainsley as our flyer and she puts her feet on their arms and they throw her they just push her as high as they can with all of their strength and she just flies and she hits a nice little toe touch at the top and then comes down it was beautiful it was beautiful about to have a beautiful performance from the band getting warmed up just a little bit and we had a homecoming queen tonight Miss Cangelosi it appeared to us in the booth that the cheerleaders really cheered pretty loud we were guessing she's a cheerleader. Catherine is one of our cheerleaders. She's one of our seniors. We love her. She's great. Um, she's one of the sweetest, kindest people that you will meet. Um, so we're so thrilled for her that she was crowned homecoming queen tonight. Yeah, and a shout out to uh, my homecoming queen, my year, Sarah De La Rosa. She was also a cheerleader. Oh, so, okay. you know, cheerleaders, you don't think we have any stats on that, but you got to think it's a gotta pretty high that. percentage. Coach Ben De Palma's telling me in the corner here, mine too was a cheerleader. So we don't have the stats unofficially. The cheerleaders have, Something a, in the water. have accounted for. We'll get Mr. David Butler on that project when he gets back into the booth here uh, next week as we head to Broadmoor. So we're going to talk about the band showcase here a little bit. We wish Father Michael Alello was up here to really give us some insights. But we don't worry. We got some notes, folks, and they're just waiting to get ready. But, hey, how great is this? I love this, that the Elish – the Catholic High football team is going to sit out there and watch as this goes on right here. I mean, I think that's just part of the spirit of Catholic High and the things we talked about with Father Lolo and with Principal Harvey. At most schools, I think you'd have the football players just get up and leave. Mm -hmm. But Coach Fertitta and most of the fans, I'm trying to duck down here, most of the fans, most of the student body, are all going to stick around now for the band showcase. Yeah, I think that one of the really awesome things about Catholic High is just the community that's created between all of the students, among all of the students, they all really support each other. 
Um, and I think that's one of the really great things. It's not this clicky football players don't hang out with the guys in band or the guys in choir. They're all eating lunch together, enjoying each other in class. Um, and that's what's really, I think, special about Catholic High. And even the band director, Mark Messina, is a grad from Brother Martin. And so he understands the community yeah. that Catholic High creates. Yeah, he's too. in his seventh year now at Catholic High, leading the band, doing a great job. And a guy that, you know, one of the guys that was uh, instrumental in us doing this, Michael Shingleton with WBRZ, a former band yeah. member of Catholic High. I think he was a saxophone player, and he's actually getting married tomorrow in Chicago. Oh, yeah. So I doubt he's listening on a Friday <laughs> night, but if anyone is, we can let them know that Michael Shingleton is getting a little bit of a shout-out. Now I can't Congratulations. Hear with, I can't hear with our headset. Coach De Palma, can you hear? Have they begun playing yet, or...? Not not quite yet. Okay, so we want to make sure we get you the first opening beats of the band performance here, and it's going to be fantastic. And we're getting the view that the judges will not get to see is our you know the press box is on the opposite side, so you might see some things going on. What they have to the left will be a very large TV screen. Mm -hmm. So kind of one of the themes is TVs, TV music, TV themes, and other portals draped. Along the band here, you're just going to see the white side of it, but don't worry, the judges, there is something on the other side. Like, like the banner. Picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't want people to be like, it's just white. What are they doing out there? Come on, guys. So they, They're supposed to be hiding, so the judges won't even see our guys and girls who are currently behind those white screens. And for those that are also, when they see the band shot over there in front of uh, the drum major that's up there and the band director up there, the pit of all the people with all mm -hmm. the symbols. Oh, man, I'm going to mess all this up. The xylophones, the bass drum, the gong. Yeah, think, there's a gong. Right? I there's mean, a gong. <laughs> folks, if you don't love a band with a gong, then you're just not living. I you mean, just come don't know on. what you're doing. Uh-uh. Yeah. I mean, Ben, I think, we're, I think we're starting. I'm not quite sure. They are starting. So we're going to try to take you now to the field, to the wide shot. And we hope you enjoy the Catholic High School Marching Band Showcase performance. And as they're going, we're going to try to give you all a couple – figures of who some people are when they're marching around and everything like that so we'll we'll go silent here in the booth just for a little bit and here comes the catholic high school marching band and their showcase performance So we have Sayer Soviak as our drum major. Sayer is a senior, an incredible student. He's done a great job at drum major this year. He's been particularly great with the cheerleaders. He always gives us the signals whenever he's getting ready to play one of our songs that we dance to, and we love us some Sayer. So he's leading the band right now. You know, one thing that's really neat and unique about the band is they have field leadership, but they also have kind of the band club leadership mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. President of the band this year, Alan Duggar, is the president of the leadership, the logistical chain of command for the band this year. And there's mm -hmm. the big TV moving across, and there you see drum major Sayer Soviak. Sayer Soviak. Mm -hmm. We're going to need Coach DePalm in the booth to back up just a step so we can see that screen over there, So we can, what we're commenting on. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate that. So right now y'all are getting a really good shot of Sayer. And really every one of those motions that he's doing, for someone that's not in a band, you're thinking he's just waving his hands, mm -hmm. but every single member of the band is looking at that, oh, looking yeah. for the key. We may not completely understand it, but they definitely do. We also have our brunettes down there, and y'all can see that they're not in their usual brunette uniform. Um, they're not in the orange and black for their showcase. It looks like they're in navy and a really pretty flowing skirt. I think that really accentuates a lot of their moves, and it makes it look very graceful. And the bands in their black pants, black vests, white sleeves, got the black feather on top. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. There they go in motion. Some more of the leadership of the band, vice presidents is Eden Landry and our secretary is Francis Din. Francis Din is also um, a photographer on campus too. He takes some really good pictures. Um, we see him around a lot. And then our managers for the band are Luke Bella and Matthew Stigel. Stigel. And our assistant managers are Margaret Saya, Joel Keller, 
Stephen Heron, Daniel Mesh, and Andrew Gunnels. Takes a lot of people to put on a great performance like this. Mm -hmm. And also, too, you know, one thing we don't have on our sheet here, but all the band parents that oh, yeah. drive the trailer, drive the truck. Just fantastic. All the work that goes in. They're at school early so that they're ready whenever the kids are getting out. And they can get help everything get on that trailer and get the guys and girls to the field on time. And we also have, folks will see on the wide shot, they'll see uh, left, there's a one brunette that's in white, kind of insinuating her right now for a little solo right there. That mm -hmm. was beautiful. Well done by her. Mm -hmm. And it looks like some of the other brunettes are trying to um, do a little costume change, and they're starting to match her. So they're telling us a little story on the field, too. It's not just um, the music. They're creating a story with it, which is really nice. Yeah, showcase is judged on many, many aspects. How you transition, how the steps go, the formations, intricacy of the formations. Mm -hmm. Now we hear a little bit of a story going on. Coach, do we have a, a field mic down there? They're, they're, okay, we're trying to get a little more of a field mic down there for the folks so they can hear some of this beautiful music that we're hearing up here in the booth. It's just fantastic. Thank you to all of our partners from the BruinBroadcast.com and WBTR for letting us show this tonight. First time that the band showcase has been showed live on TV in Baton Rouge. How exciting for the band members and the Brunettes. Coming after the homecoming game and getting their performance on television. That's awesome. Now we have one of the Brunettes. It looks like she is a ballerina. On the far, far right side of the field. Beautiful job, ladies. Well mm -hmm. done. And shout out to Miss Marianne Wascom and Miss Jamie O'Lind, the Catholic High moderators of the Bruinettes. They do a great job. I know Miss Wascom choreographs for the girls, and we just want to congratulate her on how great they look tonight. And many of these young ladies might go on. Uh, you see a lot of them on Saturday nights in Tiger Stadium as Golden Girls now. Oh, yeah. So just fantastic. It's so another. Costume change for the Bruinettes behind the screen. So the screens also serve as an image and also a chance for the young ladies to do some costume changes. On the field outside of Sayers, the drum major, we also have a lot of field leadership. Mm -hmm. Tell the folks at home kind of who leads certain ranks out there. Well, let's see. We have Amber Ledeau on flute and then Madeline Balu on clarinet. Logan Wingerter on alto sax, Sam Kane on low reeds, Rachel Edwards on trumpet, Rebecca Heron on mellophone, Kyle Becknell on trombone and baritone, Philip Touye on tuba, and we have Freeman Stoniker and Karsten Brown on percussion. And then our brunette captains tonight are Addison Bruce, Catherine Cuvion, who I'm pretty sure was on homecoming court as well, and Maddie Mistretta. Shout out to these kids for just their hard work. We can see it paying off on the field tonight. And you know, one thing about the band, you know, sports teams have a season. Mm -hmm. The band is all year long. Oh, not yeah. only do they play for the football team with the showcase, then they'll also have the basketball season with the pet band. Mm -hmm. And then they'll also go around to all the elementary schools. They've been doing that lately, oh, yeah. traveling to all the local elementary schools. Uh, teaching them the Catholic High Fight song and the alma mater. Really a great thing for those kids to see around the Baton Rouge area. So now we've gone into football jerseys and a little ESPN intro out there. CBS, whoa. Vern Lundquist, eat your heart out. <laughs> Oh, we got a little friends happening friends. now. Yeah, there's the TV. <laughs> Kevin Franklin's still up here in the booth. I'm digging it, baby. I'm digging it too, Kevin. They got the colorful umbrellas and everything. Pivot, pivot, <laughs> pivot. So great. And it looks fantastic. I mean, look at mm -hmm. them as they're stretching from the 20 all the way out to the 25-yard line, full length of the field right now.
I think I hear a, a, a cowbell as well right now. So cool. All the different instruments. Just so awesome. Hopefully the folks at home are able to watch and enjoy. We're watching the Catholic High School Marching Band Showcase Piece. Look at that. Look at the horns just stretch out right there. Wow. Drum section at midfield. Fantastic. CHS Marching Band, Bruinette, showcase piece performed live at Memorial Stadium tonight. And we wish them all the best as they will head on down to Lafayette to compete in the showcase. And hopefully they'll bring home a championship as hopefully the Catholic High football team will bring home a championship as well. So the band's marching off now doing the Catholic High fight song. And we'll march off as well here from the booth. On behalf of all of us with the Bruin Broadcast Network and especially Miss Aaron Hart for joining me for the band showcase, Kevin Franklin, Ben De Palma, and all the Bruin Broadcast partners and students. We want to thank you all for watching our broadcast. Catholic High beat the Griffins 45-7. to We'll see you next week as we travel to Broadmoor. We'll be right back here on the Bruin Broadcast Network. Go Bears. The Bruin Broadcast Network is brought to you by Catholic High School in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Right. The network is under the leadership of executive producer Matt Kemper, producers Joseph Walmack, Chris Purnell, Hilton Emard, and Joshua Langua. The Bruin Broadcast Network is a student-run extracurricular organization providing live streaming of many Catholic high school events. For a schedule of upcoming events, visit www.catholichigh.org. From all of us here at the Bruin Broadcast Network, thank you for tuning in. You can watch live at www.bbn.live. Monday at 6.30 on WPRZ2. It's Halloween week. Check it out. I'm dressed to kill. And Jeopardy's gonna rock you to the core. Boy, I hope I got this kiss makeup right. Is there anybody here who can tell me if I got it right? You nailed it, Trebek. Oh, thanks, Gene. With hunting categories. It was a graveyard smash. Clues from Gene Simmons. On Jeopardy. Happy Halloween, everybody. Monday at 4.30 on WPRZ2. Please help me help our kids. School counselors have identified kids that come to school cold without a coat. For $20, we'll keep a child warm during our cold weather months. Send me a check or visit WBRZ.com for more information. You are watching WBTR Baton Rouge. Coming to you from home. After Bill Byron Allen. <laughs> Say hello to DJ Cobra. Welcome to Comics Unleashed. We have a funny one for you because there's some funny people here tonight. Ralphie May. Everybody. Cat <laughs> Williams. <laughs> Tina Georgie. <laughs> and Don Friesen. 
Cat, how you doing, man? Excellent. Yeah? You're looking sharp, man. Well, thank you. Cubic zirconia, Swarovski crystals. <laughs> <laughs> I make you feel better. <laughs> how your kids doing? They're good, thank you. I think, I think. I haven't seen them in four days. A lot happens in four days. I got those cameras, but I think they, the camera's in the house, but they keep walking past them, and, like ducking them, so I don't, I won't know what's going on until I get there. Yeah, how many kids you have? Eight. Seven are adopted, but you know, they're still, that's still the same, same number. But you know, if you got some money, you might as well do something.